those streets. I will still worship him. I'll be created to worship him. Hey. As long as I am breathing, it is my pleasure. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. That is what I'm gonna do. One more time, see, as long as I am breathing, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know why. Everybody, everywhere, as long as I am breathing, yeah, 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 yeah. I am breathing, I will always worship.
says that if Christ had not risen then we were dead in our sins and trespasses but the thing is that he rose he rose from the dead he rose from the dead he rose from the dead that is my victory that is your victory hallelujah
my Savior is alive. Alive forevermore. The sting of death is gone. And now I live. I have eternal life. My Jesus is alive. Alive, alive, alive. What tomorrow bring? Hey, because you live, Jesus, I live today. I live to pray your name. Everybody say, because you live, Hey, Jesus, I live. I have no fear. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Because you live. Tomorrow brings. Come on, everybody say. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Say I live to praise your name. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. One more time. No fear. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. One more time, say I live to praise your name. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Death could not hold him down. Sickness could not hold him down. Poverty can't hold him down. Hallelujah. Say that could not hold him. Hey. Say that could not hold him down. What must say? That could not hold him. Hey. That could not hold him. Hallelujah. Sickness cannot hold him down. Sickness cannot hold it. Sickness cannot hold it. Poverty cannot hold it. 
Poverty can hold him down. Poverty can. He's alive, and because he lives, I live. Hallelujah, Jesus lives, and my future is alive. Hallelujah, say. Because he lives, I live. Say it. And because he lives, I live. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. Hallelujah, Jesus lives. And my future is alive. And my future is alive. Hey, 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 hey. I overcame. I overcame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's won the victory. He's won the victory. Hallelujah. He said it's finished. He said it's finished. Oh. Hey, my story is written. My story is written. Oh. Hey, I overcame. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. Now listen. Say to that mountain. Say to that sickness, you came today. Tell the problem, I already won. Say, declare it boldly. I am born of God. He said it's finished. He said it's finished. I know. My story is risen. to be here this morning. I'm excited to be here. Just tell your neighbor I'm excited to be here. A round of applause as we have our seats. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I'm enjoying myself already. I don't know about you. God is awesome. The Bible says wherever two or three are gathered, there he is. The Holy Spirit is here with us. So I just want you to be conscious of that. That we carry the presence of the Holy Ghost everywhere we go. You're welcome. Good morning, ministers of God. Good morning, church. 
Yeah, you're welcome to the New Testament Ministers Network Annual Conference. The New Testament, this is the third edition, the third program we're having, the annual one this year. We started three years ago, and God has been doing so wholesome. Great job, great work God has been doing through this ministry, and we bless God for that. The purpose of the ministry is to, to have support, encouragement, and fellowship. That is why the network had been put together. And the vision is to introduce Christ to men and to make sure that ministers of God, like you and I, that what we do is to preach Jesus and Christ alone to the world. And for us to come to the knowledge of the truth of God's word, that is the vision for this network. So I know that you are here today. God has packaged a lot for you. And I just want you to be relaxed, you know, and enjoy it and receive that which Christ has in stock for you. Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. I'll quickly go into this. It says, In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In fact, the day, you know, I, I caught the scripture, it actually jumped at me. And I was like, wow, in Christ, you know, we have all the hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge, but we are only scratching it. I want you to know that today, Christ is here, the Holy Spirit is here to talk to you, you know, to expound the word of God in your heart. All, all you need is just to be open. Open up your heart. Don't just come that, I just want to come and see what they are doing there. Be here for a purpose. Have an expectation that today I will not go the same again. I will not go home the same that Christ has something in stock for you today. So just get your heart open. And whatsoever you believe before, whatsoever you know before, you know, don't read the scripture, don't read your mind into what they are going to be teaching on this pulpit today. Just be open. Be, know that you are going to unlearn some things, some wrong doctrines that you have been upholding since years back. You are going to unlearn them. You are going to begin to relearn and uphold that which Christ wanted to uphold, the truth of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just want your heart to be open today. I don't want you to, you know, bring what you know before. Just hang it somewhere and be open because we're going to be teaching, you know, deep into the scriptures. And the men of God that God has packaged for us, they are wonderful men of God. Please, a round of applause unto them. I'm going to be introducing them. But before I do that, I want you to give yourself a round of applause because God has drawn you to be here. The Bible says those that the Lord draws are those that come to him. So God drew you, you know, to be here today. Just give yourself another round of applause for being here today. We celebrate you, men of God, women of God in the house. But I'm going to introduce number one, the host, our host. In fact, Pastor Bayo and the Pastor Jumoke. Oh, yeah, come on. they've been wonderful. Thank you, sir, for opening the door of your church, for giving us your podium to use today. More grace to you. We know you are doing greatly for Christ, and we have some more of his grace in your ministry in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to introduce Pastor Paul Rotua. He's here with his wife of Kingsview Church at Yaba. A round of applause. We can do it better, please. A round of applause to him. And Pastor Chade is his wife. She's here too with him. We celebrate you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. We're going to introduce next Pastor Femi Obadino. <coughs> He's there with his wife too, Pastor Maria. <coughs> Sorry. He's the national coordinator of MTMN. A round of applause for him, <coughs> Pastor Femi. <coughs> Pastor Edward Boro. He's there with his wife too, Chidima. He's there with his wife, Mrs. Chidima Boro. He's the registrar of our School of the Spirit and the Bible School. And next is Pastor Folalu. He's the MTN MN Songwater Coordinator. A round of applause for him. They are doing greatly. They are doing great jobs. Pastor Isaac is not here. Pastor Isaac Ogba is the Ogun State MTN Coordinator. A round of applause in Assemsia. Pastor Yinka is a member of our faculty. God bless you, sir. Pastor Kingsley of Grace Life. <laughs> ministry is around. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. Then um, I won't go without introducing my home sweetheart, the wonderful man that God has blessed me with. He's the convener of this ministry. And <laughs> Pastor Timmy David, God bless you, sir. I just want to pray for him that the Lord will keep strengthening you in the name of Jesus. The great work ahead, he will give you the grace, he will give you wisdom, he will give you strength to carry it on in the name of Jesus. 
And to the graduating student of Wabi, we have the graduating student that just graduated at the Bible school. They are wonderful guys, wonderful women of God. This, can you rise on your feet and give yourself a round? Are you here? Rise on your feet for as many that are here. Rise on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. The school has been so wonderful. They didn't want it to even complete. You know, it's the school that you must be in. God bless you. And uh, today, I just want us to open our hearts. The Holy Spirit is going to be speaking to us from everyone that comes to this podium. God bless as you open your heart. New things will be dropped in your heart. New truths of the knowledge of the word of God. Your eyes will be opened. Your eyes will be enlightened. The heart of your eyes will be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because the purpose of this meeting shall come to reality. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Are you happy being here this morning? If you're happy, just give a wave offering to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So awesome to you know, be gathering together this morning. Uh, before I go ahead, I also want to recognize the presence of some other persons in the hall this morning. Uh, can we just put our hands together as we celebrate uh, Reverend Dr. Shodia and the wife? They are here too. We we'll celebrate you, sir. God bless you. He's a member of the faculty of the School of the Spirit and Wabi. And also Pastor David Adekboju. Where are you sitting? Oh, okay, all right. Thank you for coming. Uh, the director of studies, uh, Ijoko Bible School, Wabi Bible School. That is Pastor Simeon Peter. Put our hands together for him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for this hour. Lord, we are gathered together as your people, and we know that you have brought us here to fellowship together, and to learn together, and to build the support that we have in you as co-ministers of the New Testament. That is the only ministry you have given us, to minister the New Covenant. Lord, we ask even as we proceed, as we progress in this program, let your name alone be exalted. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, just have some couple of minutes to just, you know, be with us, this, to share with us this morning uh, in the form of a charge. You know, I, I've been trusting God and I've been praying and asking God to give us, you know, the, the wisdom to present the ministry that he has given unto us. Because I discover that many people always misunderstand, you know, our message. You know, when we talk about grace, what comes to their head is license to sin. When we talk about the fact that you don't need to sow to, before God can bless you, they say we are saying people should not give. So there's a lot of misunderstanding. And I'm trusting God that as we begin to fellowship together and learn together the truth of the gospel we become more and more clear unto us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, there is a great difference between the scripture and the word of God. Amen. There is a great difference between the scripture and the word of God. And I will explain. You know, there are some things I will be saying here this morning that some of them will be a confirmation of what God has been telling you. And then some of them might come to stir your heart to go and study more. We don't claim to have known it all. All the ministers here that are going to be talking to us, they don't know it all. So that is why we need to open our hearts, you know, and learn together. There are some things that will come your way that we will need to go and open the Bible and trust you to help you to understand what is being said. Don't just push them aside. Open up your heart. And I know the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So like I said, there is a great difference between the scripture and the word of God. Let's look at John chapter 5 verse 39. Let me try to explain what I'm, what I'm trying to pass across. You know, the scripture and the word of God. In John chapter 5 verse 39.
John chapter 5 from verse 39. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, search the scriptures, you know, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You know, for many years, I read that scripture to understand it as a command from Jesus. You know, because some years when I used to go to retreat programs, you know, because of the need for us to read the Bible, you know, they, ha they would have that scripture to us, set the scripture, set the scripture. You know, as if it's like a command from Jesus. But if you look at some other translation, it's not so much as of a command. Christ was letting them know that you are busy searching the scriptures, looking for life in the scriptures. But the scripture is what points to me that gives life. Are we together? So you are setting the scripture, looking for eternal life, looking for life from the scripture. And Jesus is saying that the scripture points to me that gives eternal life. The John chapter 1 from verse 1 we read that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So obviously... That means when, the, when Jesus said you set the scripture, he was not referring to even this Bible that we are holding in our hands. Because at, at that time, Matthew has not been written. John has not been written. So obviously he was not referring to this Bible, but, of, but part of what of it was what was referring to. So we can see that the scripture does not give life, but the word of God gives life. Are we following? He said you are searching the scripture looking for life. The scripture will not give you life. But the word of God gives life. Amen. Now if every scripture is properly understood and interpreted, every scripture speaks about the word of God. Every scripture points to the word of God if correctly understood and interpreted. Are we together? So you cannot understand what I, when I say that the scripture is not the word of God. But the scripture points to the word of God. Hallelujah. So the word of God is eternal. The word of God gives life. The word of God is eternal. The word of God does not condemn. The scriptures can condemn you. But the word of God will never condemn you. Amen. In the book of John chapter 8. We read the story of a woman that was brought before the word of God. They said, this woman was caught in the very act. And the scripture said that we should stone her. You can see the scripture speaking, but there was also the word of God beside. The woman was between the scriptures and between the word of God. The scripture says, condemn her, stone her. But the word of God is saying something else. Hallelujah. So you can understand that the word of God will never condemn, but the scriptures can condemn you. So as ministers, please let us not be ministering the scripture. Let us minister the word of God. Because it is the word of God that gives life. It is the word of God that gives man peace. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke chapter, Luke chapter 2 from verse 10 to 14, we read about the great tidings, the glad tidings, when the angel, when the, when the word of God that incarnated became man when he was born. We were told that the, you know, the angels came and were announcing the good news. And all they brought was, you know, the glad tidings of great joy. The glad tidings of great joy that brought peace to man. He said, peace be unto you. So the word of God is the word of peace. It's the word of, you know, great joy. You know, we call it the gospel of the good news because Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the good news. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So what do you believe? Are you the one that is so fixated on the scripture and you are not seeing the word of God? Because there's a great difference between the two. If you go about that all you minister as a pastor, as a minister, is the scripture, you will be ministering dead and condemnation to men. But if you understand and know the word of God, because every time you speak about the word of God, what comes out? Life comes to men. Every time you speak about the word of God, peace comes to men. Every time you speak about the word of God, joy comes to men. But if your message, you know, some of us, we feel that our message is not powerful if people don't break down and start crying. Hallelujah. 
It is when you preach and you know you, you mention all the sins they are committing, you do everything they are doing, and you said the Lord's judgment is upon you, and you see people crying. Say, yeah, the message was very, very powerful. What is good news about that? If the gospel is good news, that means it should not bring condemnation to people. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And that is why some people will go about and say, all they are doing is that they are encouraging men to commit sin. Who is not even committing sin? Despite the fact that you are preaching the law, men are still sinning. So why not give them the gospel that has the power to give them the ability to live above sin? The only gospel, the only message that gives men the power over sin is the gospel. It is the word of God. Hallelujah. So what do you believe? Because what you believe is what you will teach. Whatever you believe lives in you and produces its fruit in you. Do you believe the word of God? Do you know the word of God? Do you understand the word of God? I, you know, I heard of a story of a man who was on a train. And as he was traveling, you know, you know, there was somebody that was sitting close to him. And they were now discussing. And he now discovered that the man that was sitting close to him was an atheist. He said, ah, you are an atheist. He said, why are you an atheist? And the man said, I am an atheist because I cannot believe in a God that is good and bad at the same time. I cannot believe in a God that is so demanding. I cannot believe in a God that punishes men when they miss it, when they, when they do wrong. I cannot believe in a God that will send sickness to his children to teach them a lesson. You know, some people believe that. I know what the great preacher told him. He said, in fact, me too, I am an atheist because I don't believe in that kind of a God. Hallelujah. If that is the God that you know, me too, I am an atheist because I don't believe that kind of a, a God. I cannot believe in a God that is so demanding and so that will come to frustrate your life. If Jesus said we should come unto him, all ye that labor and are heavy and I will give you rest. So whatever does not bring rest to your soul is not the gospel. He said my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if the yoke you are carrying as a believer is heavy, you have not been given the gospel. Hallelujah. And the, the, the grace which I went ahead to tell him, he said, in fact, the truth is that you are actually obedient to the true God. Because the true God is the one telling you that that is not me that they are talking about. You know, I, 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 you know, right, you know, in my growing up years as a believer, there are so many things I've heard before that even when I was hearing them, I knew that this thing is not right. But I did not see men of like passion that understand the way God was speaking to me. You know, thank God for, you know, coming in contact with this ministry and knowing these great men here. That every time I was to meet with them, I'm always happy because our heart beats together. You know, we understand, you know, together the word of God. So all those years when I hear me, uh, preaching, deep within me, I know that this thing, there is something that is wrong in this message. But I didn't know how to, you know, how to defend it. I have been in programs, you know, in my church. People will say, eh, when they come and say, come and tap into this anointing, come and, why is that you, you and your wife, you don't come out? Because we don't come out. People are rushing out, you know, somebody is ministering, people are rushing to drop money on the altar. Why are they dropping money on the altar? What are they trying to do? It's because of the wrong message they have about God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So what do you believe? Because whatever you believe is what is going to live in you and bear fruit in you. Because as human beings, we are created to function from our belief. Our belief system affects almost every aspect of our life. Whatever you believe lives in you and produces its fruit in you. You know, let's say, for instance, you know, maybe in, in our country, you, you had that maybe... Uh, a powerful military has taken over, God forbid, amen, and then, you know, begin to issue threats, you know, about what they are going to do, you know, so for hearing that news, that information, because you believe in it, it starts living in you. As you wake up in the morning, you look through the window, ah, because why? There is a new government in town. So because of the information you have, that news that you have, begin to live in you, and then you begin to bear fruit, because you are now afraid. Because why? You have had a message. That is how the gospel is. When you hear the good news, the good news lives in you and it produces good fruits. Hallelujah. But if you hear the wrong gospel, the wrong gospel will live in you and will produce a bad fruit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, as ministers of the gospel, let's begin to examine what we believe. 
what do you really believe? Do you believe that God is our father? Very important. You know, in the ministry of Christ, he began to talk about God as father. Before then, they did not know him as father. He said, I go to my father and to your father. I said, Christ, what are you saying? As in, your father, my father. The way he loves you is the way he loves me. You know, if you believe in that kind of a God that loves you as he loves Christ, then how you relate with him, the fruit it will produce in and through you will be different. Because why? You have a father-son relationship. You are not into a transactional relationship with God. You know, some people, they do things to make as if God is now owing them. He said, God, see what I've done. I don't miss program. I, uh, my third card is filled. I don't miss any of my third. I go for every program. Pastor Bayo, they organize. I go for every of their meeting. Lord, you, can, you have to do this for me. They, in other words, they are giving God their report. That God see what I have done. So it's now your turn to do your part. As if God is now owing them. Hallelujah. And you can look at it the other way around. As if they are the one owing God. A pastor will tell you, see what the Lord has done for you. What have you done for him? So, they are making you seem as if you are owing God. You have to pay the debt they are owing God. And trust me, brothers and sisters, you don't owe God anything. God is not a needy God. God is not in need. Remember, he's the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. God is all sufficient. So, there is nothing God needs from you, so to say. Hallelujah. So stop them having that mentality of you owing God or of God owing you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God is all sufficient. You know, everything that you require for life and godliness, the Bible says he has given them unto you. Nothing is lacking. A child of God, you're born again, filled with the spirit of God. You don't lack anything spiritually. Don't let yourself be deceived to believe that you are climbing the spiritual ladder to meet God. You are already with God because you are seated with him in the heavenly places. You are not climbing any ladder to meet God. You are already with God. In fact, he has come to dwell in you. He lives in you. Hallelujah. God lives in you. And that means that you are not dirty. Because God does not live in a dirty place. You are righteous before him. You are holy before him. You are blameless. Hallelujah. You have been justified. You have been separated from darkness. You have been delivered from death. And you are now in the kingdom of his dear son. You are not being delivered. You are not being delivered. Child of God, you have been delivered. You know, sometimes, you know... Thank God for this revelation of God. Amen. Because, you know, I used to read the Bible looking as if there, there are some things that still need to be done for me to be really be born again. Not knowing that what I was looking for, I already have it. He said, did God tell you not to eat this fruit? He said, ah, yeah, God said, the day we eat, we are going to die. Oh. You will not surely die. You will not really die. The God knows that the day you eat, you will become like him. Where they not already have been created in the image and likeness of God? The day, he said the day you eat, you will be like God. We didn't already like God. So what you already have, religion is telling you that you don't have it. It's a lie. Disbelieve religion and believe the gospel of the kingdom. Disbelieve religion and believe the word of God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You know, as we progress in this conference, we need to also understand that you know, God helping us to begin to be able to divide the word of God correctly. The, the, I mean, the Bible correctly. As in, trying to understand what the Bible is saying. Because most time, we read what we know and believe into the Bible. You know, uh, one of our pastor, faculty members always say that, read the, you know, the gospel and the New Testament as if you are reading a novel. You know, there is some, sometimes, you know, don't misunderstand me. 
There is no spiritual. Just read it as if somebody wrote you a letter. Don't think that there's any spiritual interpretation. I hope somebody will not get confused. What I mean is that when you read, you know, we, 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 we understand English language, right? Read it as you are reading English language. When you see past tense, know that it is past tense. Because of all, when we see past tense, we think that it is not yet past. Because when the Bible says we have been delivered, so people don't believe that they have been, and that it is past tense. They are still looking for deliverance. Somebody will build his whole ministry in just wrong understanding of the scripture. I have a deliverance ministry. Who are you delivering? Well, you can deliver unbelievers, but not believers. Because a believer that understands who is in Christ is already delivered. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So when we read the scripture, even when you read the gospel, you know, there's a course in a Winning Army Bible School that the, type, the course is, you know, how to study and understand the Bible. You know, it's a very nice course. In fact, if you are here, you have not attended. If you, you might have attended all, all the Bible school, but if you have not attended Wabi, Winning Army Bible School, you have not attended a Bible school. I'm telling you, I can, I, can, I can say it anyway. Because the stuff that will be given there, your eyes will be open. Say, ah, is this the Bible that I've been reading all these years? Amen. I said, Amen. Do you know that the gospel revolves not around your love and commitment to God? Let me say that again. The gospel, the life in the kingdom, does not revolve around your love and commitment to God. Instead, it revolves around the love and commitment of God to you. Amen? I will say that again. The gospel of Christ does not revolve around your love and commitment to God. But instead, it revolves around the love and commitment of God to you. Amen? Hallelujah. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and then uh, they were hiding, when they had God coming, they went into hiding. Was God aware that they have sinned? He was aware. Did he stop him from coming to have fellowship with them? He will say, where are you? Many are hiding in their struggles. And Christ is saying, where are you? I want fellowship with you. Amen. Somebody will say, ah, but pastor, in the book, or even Jesus Christ himself said it, that uh, we should love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, you know, that this is where, you know, the law and the prophet hangs. I say, yeah, you are correct. Remember I said that we need to know how to study and understand the Bible properly. Amen? Let's look at that scripture so that we understand what I'm trying to say. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew chapter 22. I will soon take my seat. Matthew 22. So that you understand when I say that there's... Gospel of the kingdom revolves around God's love and compliment towards you and not your love and compliment towards him. Amen. Matthew 22 from verse 35. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. He said, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said unto him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So upon these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets. Hallelujah. Remember the question they asked him. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? And I am a Nigerian. I am a Gentile. The law was never written to me. I am not under the law. So I cannot say that Christ was talking to me there. Because as a child of God, you are no longer under the law. So when you read the scripture, some scriptures, there's a, uh, you know, um, 
another cause. Is, that is the, the foundation of the New Testament. You know, talking about, you know, the fact that you have the epistles, the, the, the book, the, 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 the scripture, that is uh, the law of Moses, the prophets, and then we have the gospel and you have the epistle. All of this, you need to understand which of them we can learn with this, we can learn from the Bible. But not everything in the Bible is written to you as a child of God. Hallelujah. So like this one now, they were asking him, what is the greatest commandment in the law? So when Christ responded, was he answering that question? So that means everything Christ said is in the law. And is the end of the law to those that believe for righteousness to prevail. Hallelujah. So the question, okay, which one now applies to us then? Because we have read in Romans chapter 6 verse 14, that sin shall not have master over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. You know, Galatians chapter 5 verse 18 says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And because we are being led by the Spirit, because we have the Spirit of God in us. Amen? We are being led. And so that means we are not under the law. So what is it that is not a command to us? Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I was going with a friend, a very bosom friend, I said, I'm trying to see in this case if there is no commandment for believers to love God who, in the Bible. I'm, I'm still looking for it. But the, the, the believer loves God. Don't, don't misunderstand me. You know why? Because the Bible said that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. You love God by default. You are not trying to love God. You, you know, Ephesians chapter 6, I think verse 24, said you love God with an undying love. The love you have for God is strong. Because it's the same love that God has for you. You may not know it. You may not understand it yet, but that is the truth. And as you to understand the truth, remember what you believe lives in you and produces its fruit in you. So if you believe that you already have the love of God in you, you are not looking for God's love. You are not trying to love God. You already love God with an undying love. You may not know it, but you love God. Hallelujah. You know, what, what Jesus Christ said, he said it. He said, a new commandment and gave unto you. Let me look for that scripture. John chapter, um, where is it now? I said, a new commandment I gave unto you. Okay, yeah, John chapter 13. It says, I'm giving you a new commandment. See the new commandment that God, Christ has given us. That you love one another. Just as I have loved you. That you also love one another. Can you see the new commandment? He didn't say you should love God there. Eh? Amen. Are you following me? A new commandment I give unto you that you should love one another. In other words, receive my love. Receive God's love. God is the one loving you. Receive it. As you receive it, you will leave it out. Is somebody following me? So you are, the commandment to you is to receive the love of God. As you receive that love. And I say, love your brother, love your neighbor as I have loved you. And that was what John also echoed in 1 John. You know, 1 John we also read about the commandment, 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. He said, this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. So, John, he said he command you to receive his love and then love. And here he said, just believe in it. The commandment you have as a believer is to believe in Christ. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Amen. So the truth is that this message, we must, we must proclaim it everywhere. At every opportunity, at every platform, proclaim this message. You know, some of us are not yet bold about this message because we are not yet sure. Today, God will give you assurance. I say God will give you assurance that you will proclaim this message with no fear. You know, with, with boldness. With courage. That is why this network is available for you. Our numbers are going to be, you know, I'm sure we will we'll let you know. You know, you can reach or reach, reach a Reverend Paul, Pastor Bio, reach us. Pastor Yinka is there. Everyone, if you have any issue, connect with us. We are there to support ourselves. This gospel, we must proclaim it. You know, forget about the wrong doctrines everywhere. You know, the word of God is spreading. The gospel is spreading. Thank God for internet. Eh? Some people, they just go to church, listen to their pastor, just to fulfill the righteousness. But they have another pastor online that they listen to. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
because maybe of their commitment there or there's one stake they have there, so they are not able to say, I'm not coming again. They are still attending. Though the method is not blessing them, but they have a pastor that is blessing them. They have a, a platform that they are learning from. So we are going to pray this morning and say, God, open my eyes that I may understand the word of God. I didn't say understand the Bible. Open my eyes that I may understand the word of God. And then we are going to now follow with a prayer to say, Lord, give me boldness to declare this message everywhere. Because when you understand it, and then you have the boldness, before you know it, the world will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. The word is spreading, and I know that you are part of this you know, army that God is sending out to release the world, to release the supernatural life. The supernatural life, is, the supernatural life is the life of Christ. It's the life of God. And every born-again believer have the supernatural life of God. You are not going to be supernatural. You are already supernatural by the virtue of Christ in you. Hallelujah. Can we just stand upon our feet this morning and just, you know, let's just spend uh, two, three minutes to pray. I, first, I say, Lord, I want to understand you. I want to understand the world. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. This gospel of the kingdom, I want to understand it. Lord, let my eyes of understanding be open. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I may know the difference between the scripture and the word. That I may know what you have written to me. That I may stop preaching death but preaching life. The life of the gospel. Let's trust God for boldness. The boldness to declare the gospel. Boldness upon every minister here. Oh, even as the word is coming, as we are receiving it, it will be charging us up. Motivated, empowered, encouraged. To go forth with this message, the message of the cross, the message of the gospel, the message of the power of resurrection. We have power over death. Death has no power over us because we know that Jesus, our prototype, is right now seated with Christ in, in heaven. And so it shows us that we too, we have defeated death. Death cannot defeat us, but we are mastery. We are, you know, we are victorious over death. That even if we die and leave this world, we will know we are going to rise again. We are going to rise again. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Lord, we give you glory for this hour. We know that this is just a scratch. We know that more of your word is coming. More of the gospel is coming. Let our eyes be open. And let there be boldness dropped in our heart. That will not be afraid of anyone. But we declare the gospel in humility and in simplicity. In the name of Jesus. That even when we have the opportunity to speak with our superiors in the ministry. To speak with our general overseers in the ministry about this gospel. We trust you for boldness and wisdom and the simplicity of the spirit. To present the world with humility. In the name of Jesus. I know that many of us we might be in that stage, in those stages, whereby it is difficult to even speak to the man of God. But Lord, we know that because you want your word to reach every nook and cranny of every heart. So Lord, we receive this boldness today and we receive courage today. That Lord of oh God, in simplicity of the word, Lord, we will present this gospel to every opportunity that you bring someone our way. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Bye. 
Turn it to worship, turn it to prayers at this time. You're talking to your father, forget about who is sitting or standing by your side. You're talking to the king of kings, the one who created you. The one who decided that you should come here to this earth. The one who knew you before you were formed in a woman's womb. The brain behind every confidence that you have, the backbone behind every success that you've had. The one who determined even your whole life before you came. <laughs> the one who knows where you're coming from, where you are, where you're going to. Tell him, Lord, this is me. This is me. Yes, that one who you create. That one you created that day, that day, that day. He said, when my eyes saw your unformed body, that one, talk to him. Be personal with him, with him, with him, with him. The one who came to change bondage to freedom, failure to success. Your father, your own father, your own father. Why didn't he create you as a cat or as a dog or as a goat? The one who, who created you as a human being to share in his nature. Talk to him. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, he said, I knew you. The one who knew you, who knew you, the real you. The real you. The real you. The real you. Not just the you living in that house, the you pastoring, the you who is a husband, uh, the you trusting God for one. The, the one who knows you, talk to him. What are you telling him? Lord, this is me. This is me. That me. That me you created before I knew any of these people here. This is me, Lord. This is me. 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 You are the one who had a program for my life. This is me, Lord. You are the one who determined it before I came. Lord, this is me. You are the one who spoke words over my life before I came. Lord, this is me. That me. Yes, this is me. before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you and I spoke words over your life. Lord, this is me. That me. This is me. This is me. This is me. Not the me that men call me. Not the me defined by experiences and defined by situations and circumstances. This is me. That me. That me. Father. We've heard. We just heard. It's a relationship, a father-son, a father-daughter relationship. This is me. Oh, 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 this is me. Ala mania doki yala. Ira mala mania na boshate logu kusira makrati mala bondo rada made na koko. Ishate le bosi ira bagiana magadi ada bedo goli ada bashate rodi mama makoto. Ene mene malabala makasi yala magadi ama na makandere bokonga la tate tete shate. Yuro bobo siere fisho tolo mama sike kroto pelege dasis.
Mande coca, ia leca. Hey. Casse caca. your father this is me Lord this is me where is your will for my life this is me yes. we sing I surrender to God and we think it's a song for unbelievers surrender to him it's an activation service not a normal service it is an activation service. The supernatural starts from God, God, God meeting with you. It starts from you presenting yourself before God. It's not a program you have. It's not a plan. You, there, is, there, is, there is nothing you want to do after now. You just want to say, God, this is me. This is me. Forget about who is by your side. Forget about every other thing. Forget about the rents you've not paid. Forget about the, 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 the prayer points you have had to repeat concerning those physical things that will not matter if Jesus was to show up tonight. Many a times we disturb ourselves over what will not matter if Jesus was to show up tonight for rapture. You disturb yourself over what you're going through in your relationship or in your church or what you're going oh, The school fees is, are here. No, 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 that's not in the supernatural. You forget about whatever is in the physical. You just present yourself. This is we, you presenting yourself before God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah El Shaddai, unchangeable changer, lion of a tribe of Judah. I am that I am. I know there is sickness in your body, but present yourself before God and see. <laughs> I know the bills are not paid, but present yourself before God. This is me, Lord. This is me. 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 That me that cannot help himself. That me that cannot do it without you. That me, yes, that want to be a better husband. Yes, that want to be a better pastor. Yes. But Lord, this is me. It is an activation service and it must stay so. Jesus, Jesus, can you sing Jesus? to Jesus. Jesus your name Comforter, 
your hands around yourself and just minister to this Jesus minister to him father and son father and daughter minister to him 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 yo sakamia Nada, 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 To Jehovah Shama, to Jehovah Rapha, to Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jairi, Jehovah El Shaddai, Unchangeable Changer, Lion of a tribe of Judah, I am that I am. There is none like him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Let's have a wonderful seat, if you can. Hallelujah. I am blessed. You will never remain the same again. That's not just a usual line. That is prophetic. You will never remain the same again. God does not waste our time. All right? He's not a God who wastes time. And um, like I said, it's an activation service. And um, I just have some very few minutes to be off here. Pastor Edward Boro has done the work of um, saying exactly what um, I would have loved to say. Praise God. In an activation service like this, we must understand that something will happen. Praise God. You know, we are ministers of the gospel, and we are here to just retreat together and trust God for things that will begin to happen in our ministries. There will be new experiences in our various ministries. Say a very good amen. amen. You know, I always say that when you have Gary and then you have water and you put the Gary inside water, you will drink Gary. But if you boil the water, you take it off from that 25 degrees Celsius room temperature and you lift it to 100 and you put Gary, it's the same Gary. But this time around, you'll be eating a bar. Now, what was the difference? It is the boiling. Praise God. Are you following? It is the boiling that made the difference. All right? So you're not eating Eba. You're not drinking Gary. So this is an activation service, and I want you to be expectant. There are many people who don't believe in impartation. There will be impartation here today. It has already started. Say amen. And impartation is not somebody giving you something. Maybe that's why some, it's not, a, for example, when Pastor Bayo and uh, Pastor Paul Rutra will come up here, it's not that they want to give you something, all right? But impartation is all about calling forth that which is already on your inside. That's what it is. Praise God. You know, Paul was telling Timothy, don't forget that gift too, that was revealed to you when the body of hell just laid hands on you, all right? So there are some things that lie dormant. There are some things that are there. There are dimensions that are there. And... You know, you've not really come into um, experiencing them. Those are the kind of things that will happen as a result of this service. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it is an activation service. So be expectant and understand that that is what God wants to do. Because after now, you will become another man, another woman, another boy, another girl. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So very quickly in about five minutes, how to activate the supernatural. I'll just share just a few thoughts and I'll leave. Number one is what Pastor Eldor has dealt with. You teach it. You know, I love acronym a lot, but today I don't know if I should give acronym. Praise God. <laughs> I always like to put everything in acronym. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay? That's the first thing you do. You teach it. Sometimes people don't just know. They are born again, they will make heaven. If the trumpet sound, they will go, they disappear. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so there's a scripture, I, whenever I read it, I'm like, Jesus, check parole. He said, greater works than this you will do. The one he did, I'm still yet to scratch. And he's saying, greater works than these you will do. You will do, will, is the word, you will do. Greater works than these you will do. So because I go to the Father, me, I'm going. So you are the ones here now to do greater works. You will do greater works. <laughs> but let me encourage somebody because some people are like, hi, are you sure that thing really? We really need to understand it very well. Maybe that's not what Jesus meant. Anyway, greater works don't necessarily mean greater miracles. Praise God. It does not necessarily mean greater miracles. You know, some people are into counting the number of miracles Elijah did. Elisha did. Oh, that's why he had double portion. Elisha did eight. Elijah did eight. This one did 16. No. All right? Greater works means greater works. All of Jesus' influence was in the region. Israel. Praise God. 
Ryan Bonke was saying before he died, he said he had been to over 100 countries. That's greater works. Hello? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying now? All right? So, and God has put you here to make impacts. And by the reason of your being here today, I prophesy once again, you will become another man <laughs> and another woman. And in your various ministries and services, the Lord will begin to use you in dimensions you've never experienced before. Amen. Hallelujah. So like I said, number one is you teach it. You teach it. So if I'm going to use, uh, for those who, Pastor Edmund is here, they love taking an acronym from me. So you use the letter T. You teach it. You teach the supernatural. I've, I've been privileged to be in services where it, 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 you know, because it can't be communicated. Sometimes men of God don't know. They just don't know. And that's why we are here. Praise God. There are, you know, I've, I've met people who will say, I don't believe in this, I believe in that. Some will say, okay, I don't believe in speaking in tongues, it's for, it's for that time. And some will say, okay, he died with that time. And all kinds, I don't, I don't, I don't debate issues like that. Because um, God actually has enough. And as much as you can carry, come and carry. <laughs> Praise God. As much as you want to know, come and know. But there are dimensions beyond what you know. There are dimensions beyond what you have experienced. One of them is what you will experience here today in Jesus' name. So you teach it in your service. After now, when you learn, whatever you're learning, make sure that you go communicate it. If you don't teach people about the supernatural, they won't know. In Mark 16, I'll now open scripture because of our time. You know, when Jesus Christ was living and he said, these signs shall follow them that believe, you'll be shocked there are many pastors who have never shared with their members things like that. All of the signs that were mentioned shall characterize their life. Praise God. They will speak in new tongues. They will work miracles. They will, pick, uh, 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 they will drink deadly poison to not harm them. All of those things are not written for angels. They are written for your members. So go share it. Teach it. Let them know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you don't teach it, then they can't come into it. They can't walk in it. Because they can't walk in what they do. And so when you teach it, uh, people become aware. And when they become aware, they become conscious of it. Praise God. And when they become conscious of it, th their faith becomes stirred to work in the supernatural. So you, what's the letter T again? You teach it. Then I'll use the letter E. Are you there? Hallelujah. You exercise it. You exercise it. Don't just teach them. So whatever you're going to learn here today, all right, and that God will introduce, exercise it. Sometimes the problem of ministers of God is that we are not bold. We are not bold. I mean, it's there. So exercise it. Exercise it in your service. I, I, told, I told a member some time ago, I said, don't hand any prayer meeting without, uh, oh, it was even on fellowship people I was telling, on fellowship, you know. I said, don't end any prayer meeting. When, the, when we tell you in church, uh, this last uh, Wednesday should be prayers, and you as own fellowship leader, how would you just allow the prayer meeting to go without you calling forth for whoever is sick and all of that? Say, minister to them, pray. There are ministers of God who don't because you're scared. Like, what if I call? Does, what if, if? No. You are supposed to tell people what God can do. It is God who will do it. So teaching is telling them what God can do. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So you exercise it. You exercise it. You make sure that you exercise it. I pray after now when you speak, there will be effect. Please be saying amen when I say these things. When you speak, there will be effect. Amen. When you touch somebody, whatever, uh, you, know, you, you know, your hands will not be normal anymore. Amen. It will be supernatural. Amen. Say a very good amen. amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord will speak to you. You will hear him amen. be saying amen. amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. He will speak to you about people's issues. Amen. Hallelujah. So be bold to exercise all of the gifts of the Spirit and all of the... So you have to be bold. If you're not bold, I mean, it's just there. It's like a generator. The generator is there. It can give you power, B. You've not turned it on. 
turn it on. Turn it on. I always say it was not in the upper room that the people received the Holy Spirit. Because I read John 20 or so, John 20, 21 or something, that Jesus Christ, the Bible said, breath upon them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Was he joking? He wasn't. They received it. But he said, tarry so that you can carry. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Until what you have received that is on your inside will come up from within you and come upon you. Because it is when it is upon you that you become supernatural. That you become supernormal. That the same Femi you just shook his hand, now, when he now calls you out, all right, is someone else. Praise God. Because what is within you has come up from within and is now upon you. So this is an activation service and God will activate you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So exercise it. Letter T was what? Teach it. E. So A, accept it. Accept that this is what God has sent you to do. To express the supernatural to humanity. This is your work. This is where we are different. You're not Dangote. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, accept today. Now that you're here. You know, some people, when you ask them, they are calling. When they start putting sentences together, you'll be scared. Killing Gongolo. Hallelujah. So, I want you to accept the supernatural as your duty. When you leave this place, thank God tomorrow is service. Teach it, exercise it, accept. It is now your duty to extend the supernatural to humanity. And in the name of Jesus, when you leave this place, you will become another man. You will become another woman. So accept this is your duty now. Extending the supernatural. And um, let us see. Uh -huh. Some people, praise God. Hallelujah. You command the supernatural. You command it. If you don't command it, it won't work. Praise God. Hallelujah. You command it. You open your mouth and use it. You know, I was telling my members some time ago. I said, I said how did, how did um, Noah bring all the animals into the ark, male and female, all the animals that God had created? You know, they said he went to bring them. I said, well, read your scripture very well. The Bible said the animals came to Noah who was in the ark. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go and read. I won't tell you where it is. Praise God. The animals came. How did the animal come? Because I had the vision, and it was that vision I was struggling with that vision. Because God was the one who told me in, the, in that vision that this is how Noah brought the animals into the ark. And you know, when something is so personal like that, especially when you've not found a scripture, you don't open your mouth and share it. Are you following? You don't share your vision. You share your vision that is in scripture. Praise God. If it's personal to you, share it with your wife and your people. Praise God. And I was like, ah. He said, because that task was an impossible task. Male and female, of all the animals that God had created, do you know how many? He said, Noah used, he commanded them to come. He was in the hack. He commanded them to come. And they came to Noah, who was in the hack. Praise God. Uh, darkness was over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God was hovering over the water and there was still darkness. How can the spirit of God be moving and there will still be darkness? There will still be emptiness. The earth was a chaotic mass and God's spirit was moving. It is possible for the spirit to be within you and everything still seems disarray in your ministry and in your life. Because while we were worshiping there, God told me there are ministers here who are sick in their bodies. And the Holy Ghost is inside you. But in your body, you're sick. You've had to repeat prayer points again and again concerning that issue. But anyway, you came to Noble House and this is all. All right? Uh, you, are, you, 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 you said the last amen concerning that healing. Because you prayed concerning it too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God was moving and there was still darkness. And not until God opened his mouth to say, let there be light, there was still darkness. When you leave today, learn to command the supernatural. Open your mouth and speak. When you speak after today, there will be effect. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Pastor Lekon, Anthony is here. 
Is it here? Okay, it's not here. Uh, there was somebody who wrote a final paper because he's the only one who knows. I think my wife too will know. Uh, she wrote a final paper in um, the university and after writing a final paper, she went to the hostel and slept and she woke up a cripple. After writing the last paper, I was in Bayelsa State and I was praying in the night and God woke me up. He said, send this person a text message. And I sent, I mean, the text message was, how in the world? If I looked at the content, it was strange because I didn't know. He said, and this was what it read. Um, Do not kill yourself. You will yet walk again. Now, I didn't know she had become a cripple. The last time I saw her, she was okay. But I was in Bayesa still praying in the night. And then God said, send this person this text message. And I sent her the text message. It was later when she asked me to write the forward of her book. She didn't even tell me what happened. It was in the book that I saw what happened. That night, she took a knife to stab herself. And when the phone beeped, she now made up her mind, let this be the last thing I will do before I die. And she picked the phone and it read, do not kill yourself, you will yet walk again. And then she dropped the phone and did not kill herself and she went to bed and woke up whole. Such experiences, st- such is what you will experience after now. Amen. Please be saying amen. amen. I have just a few minutes more. So open your mouth and command the supernatural when you leave. That's your son that is sick. Command. Hallelujah. I think I've talked about the last one. The last one should be HIV. I hope I still know how to spell. The last one is H. Uh, I've said it from the beginning. You heat up. You heat up. You boil it. Praise God. You boil it. Don't, like I say in my analogy, don't just have water and then have gari. When you put gari into water, you'll be drinking gari. But when you boil the water, you'll be eating a bar. Are you following so you heat it up. You heat it up. You heat it up. That's why we have come. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Can you heat it up before we leave here? Just heat it up. I hope you see what is happening now. I hope you get the message. So heat it up. Heat up. Heat up. Heat up. Heat up. That was what Jesus told them to do in the upper room. He told them to do that in the upper room. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, they received it. He said, but tarry in Jerusalem until what is within become heated up. Become heated up. Heat it up. Heat it up. Heat it up. Out of your belly. 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 Ekuweyelekuamanya <laughs> Ajagami no kukosi, e yige dukuma lati, domo momo shanaka iyana gia la madi kolomo natiti, o lo zizi si mi kumo yanika, o no papi mi kulume sheti mama, o rioro riade lo site ne do boshi aya ne koko yobede, e ne hi ni 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 wi ni wunku yani etos. This Uriziki ziki du ziki u, jiru zikani. Yesu kili dui, da ji du bikiya, du moza, 
Dumuza 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your healing power flow. Let your healing power flow. Let sickness vanish away. Let pains go away. Thank you, Father. Oh, the Lord is touching our lives, is touching our bodies. Healings are taking place. Where there is pain, comfort. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Father. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, we thank you for that which you are doing. Thank you for the release of your power, the supernatural. Because it's welling up in us, overflowing and coming upon us. Thank you for the healing touch. Thank you for the comfort. Blessed be your name, Father. You've assured us as we will not leave you the same. And that is our testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I say in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have our seat. Amen. Hallelujah. There's still going to be more heating up. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Um, like Pastor Femi said, God doesn't waste anybody's time. I don't want us to be in a hurry today. Amen. Please just relax. If you have an appointment that you might need to call and say, please, sorry, can we reschedule? Don't rush out of this place today. Amen. So that you can take in everything that God has for you. Amen. Without much ado, I want to go uh, into the next session of the program. Uh, I want to bring up uh, one of our you know, very dear you know, partner in ministry. Um, very 
you know, simple, but it's deep. You know, he's, uh, he's traveled, he's, he's ministers, ministered, you know, far and wide. And I know that you will not, you know, waste your time listening to him this morning or this hour. Uh, he's a senior pastor of Kingsville uh, Church in uh, Yaba, in a very successful ministry. Please join me as I welcome Reverend Paul Rotwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Come on, let's lift up our hands to him again. Oh, something, there is a stirring here. There's a stirring in the atmosphere. There is a stirring. Gifts have been stirred up. Gifts have been stirred up. Unctions are be stirred up. Unctions are be stirred up. Fresh vision are being received. Yeah, fresh visions are being received. Impossibilities are being turned and made possible. Yep, 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 yep. You're beginning to see yourself do the things you couldn't do before. Yeah. There's a stirring. There's a stirring. There's a stirring. Come on, don't lose sight of it. Cooperate with him. Yeah. Cooperate with him. Cooperate with him. Receive a member. Papa Bodo. Is your God also shuve membra that a dia trados to bande. The Holy Ghost is stirring up something inside you. And the spirit is upon us. The wilderness have been turned into a forest. All fruitful fields have been turned into a forest. The spirit is upon us. The spirit is upon us. Calling for demonstrations of the spirit. Take note of the things that are happening in your heart. Take notes, take notes, take notes, take notes, take notes. Take notes. That's a stirring. There's a stirring. Oh, we are the people of a beautiful country. Yeah, 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 yeah. We belong to Zion. Oh, glory to your name. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. Let's just help ourselves. Glory to God. Somebody with an, with an ear problem here. Glory to God. Yes, son, the ear, just come, just lay hands on it. And you've got an ear condition. You've got an ear condition. It's come, it's, it's just... 
just pray for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Someone's got an ulcer issue. Ulcer issue. Please come. 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 Just, just, just. Someone like that here. Yeah. An ulcer issue. Someone just come. Just come. Someone an ear issue. Just come. Glory to God. Amen. Let's administer the power of God over your body in the name of Jesus. It's come, glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, praise God. We are celebrating the supernatural here. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Basa to better. In the name of Jesus, 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 also we curse you, in the name of Jesus, be healed, the healing power of God flows into your body now, yeah, 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 it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. The healing power of God. The healing power of God flows into your body right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Power of God. Power of God all over you. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A power of God all over you. In the name of Jesus. A power of God all over you. In the name of Jesus. Sickness out of this body. Yep, 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 yep. Glory to God, glory to God. That person with that knee problem right now begin to exercise that knee. The power of God is touching it right now. That knee issue, that knee pain. Come on, come on, exercise it. The power of God, the power of God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Glory to God. Someone here is like every quarter, every quarter in the past three, four years, every quarter, it's like some you fall ill so much. It's like it's almost a, almost on a quarterly basis. Amen. Glory to God. That thing is about is it's stopping. Yeah, if you're that person, just come. We we'll just lay hands on you. We we'll pray for you. Just, if that person is here. Come on, 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 come on. A power of God over your body. Power of God over your body. Power of God over your body. The power of God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts and chapter 2. Glory to God. Acts chapter 2. Abra di si si fe ben fredish to pa. Abra di sto de bonda. A a a a a a le a ka mono she se da da. How do we do that now Lord? How do we do that now? How do we do that now? How do we do that now? Bible says and there was great joy in the city. Said, and there was great joy in the city. There was great joy. 
There was great joy. There was great joy. There was great joy. Acts 8. There was great joy. There was great joy. The people gave heed to him, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And uh, what was the conclusion? And there was great joy. There was great joy. There was great joy. There was great joy. Somebody's called Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. We are going to do something. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Femi said it's an activation meeting. Hallelujah. We're going to do something now. Watch this. In Luke's gospel chapter 10, Jesus sent the disciples out and they came back with joy. And Jesus said, don't rejoice because the demons feel, you know, you know, because the demons, you know, they, 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 you cast out demons and all that. They, they, don't rejoice because of those miracles. Say rejoice because your names are written. Do you understand me? He said, so, and the Bible says, and in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. Are you listening to me? There's something about joy and the supernatural. You cannot the easiest way to jump into the supernatural are you listening to me? Is to step into joy. Are you listening to me? Do you know what joy does? Have you seen a drunk man before? He cares about nothing. At that time that he's drunk, the world is at his feet. Joy loosens you. It loosens you. It loosens you to be used by the Spirit of God. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. He said, Father, I thank you because you have hidden these things from the wise, from the prudent. You have chosen to reveal these things to some certain people. And you are the people that he has received. Are you listening to me? So, joy frees you from fear. It frees you from self, self-consciousness. Right? We all know that the supernatural is ours. So I can't preach, I, I, I can't preach too much. We all know it. We all know it, don't we? Don't we know it? That we ought to walk in the supernatural. Oh, we've seen our fathers uh, walk, walk in the supernatural. We've desired it so much. Hallelujah. But, but, but men have not been bold enough. Men have not been, uh, 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 men have been too stiff. One of the things that joy does for you, glory to God, is that it loosens you up. Praise God. You, don't, you are carefree. You, are, you, are, you don't care about your PR. You, are, you, don't, you don't care about your personal rep. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't care whether anybody is going to, whether, whether they are going to laugh at you or not. You don't care whether you are going to miss it or not. I, 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 I'm not afraid. I, I, what if I miss it? <laughs> Come on. And so that's that, that, that what we are going to do this morning. Glory to God. Rise to your feet. You can begin to rejoice where you are. You can begin to rejoice where you are. Come on. Ha <laughs> ha! 
The people that will bring joy to the world are here. The people that will bring joy to the world are here. The people that will bring joy to the world are here. Oh, the people that will bring joy to the world are here. The people that will bring joy to the world are here. Ah, shout hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, I bring joy to the world. Come on, say to yourself, I bring joy to the world. 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 Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Acts chapter 2, let's sit down. We are joy carriers. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Amen. If to stalked us tongue at the other non stop fire, do not compete with the world for you carry another message. Do not compete with the world in that which they do. A free tongue cost to Gabala. For you have been called unto something higher. Amen. For you have been called unto something greater. Amen. And so, do not compare yourself with the rich and the wealthy and the successful on the terms of the world. For you carry something greater. One that the world will always need irrespective of the weather or the climate, irrespective of the location, this message is for everyone. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Did you get that? Hallelujah. For you have not been called to conquer seven mountains. Did you hear what I said? You haven't been called to conquer the seven mountains, the so-called seven mountains that men have taught. A frailty issue you have been called with one message. The message of Jesus and his salvation. The message of Jesus and liberation from the shackles of the enemy. The message of Jesus, which is a message of eternal life. So stay with it. Preach it. And that is what the one that will be backed with signs, wonders, following. For that's the one that heaven will breathe upon and back. So stay with it. So stay with it. So stay with it. 
So stay with it. So stay with it. So stay with it. So stay with it. Be bold to lay hands. Be bold to make the commands. Be bold. Be bold. Oh, to speak that word. Oh, and by this your hands, many signs will be wrought. Acts chapter 2. Verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. The Bible tells us about Jesus. When Peter was preaching to them, he said, Jesus, a man approved or attested to. A man exhibited. A man shown by the Lord. How did he do it? He said uh, he was attested by God or approved by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him. Friends, the supernatural. I gave a word earlier. Amen. We have not been called to be the richest man on earth. So, oh, we have not been called to be the most successful person on earth. If that's your ambition, praise God. If you are the most successful at a field, praise God. If you are the richest, praise God. But as the ministers of God, God called Jesus, approved him by signs, wonders, by the supernatural. Genesis chapter 1, when God was going to come on the earth, by the Spirit of God, the Bible said the Spirit of God moved. When Jesus was going to be born, the Spirit of God moved upon Moses. So, God started with the supernatural. Started the new race through Jesus with the supernatural. In Acts 2, the Spirit of God moved into this, that place. And uh, they began to walk uh, in the realm of the spirit or of the, in the realm of the supernatural after the resurrection of Jesus. And that is the pattern. Somebody said that's the pattern. Come on, say it again. That's the pattern. And uh, so for us to succeed in the assignment that he has given to us, we must follow the pattern. For us to succeed in the assignment, we can gather people, hallelujah, through other means. After all, there, there, uh, there are people who, 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 who are not believers uh, that can pack stadiums. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But listen to me. There is a pattern. Tell your neighbor there is a pattern. The pattern how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, with power, and he went about doing good and healing all those oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. That was what he came to do. Hallelujah. 
That was what he came to do. Jesus had a message. The message of the kingdom. And it was back. The Bible said Jesus came to teach. He came to preach. And he came to do what? To heal. These three things Jesus did. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. He went about doing good. Bringing succor to many. He went about doing good, uh, bringing joy and gladness everywhere, everywhere he went. Remember that song? Everywhere he went, uh, he was doing good. The mighty healer, he healed the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking everywhere he went. Uh, listen, that uh, is uh, the message uh, and the assignment uh, we have been given. Uh, it was born in the supernatural. Uh, it will be carried in the supernatural. Uh, it, will, it must end uh, in the supernatural. Uh, we can not shy away from it. Uh, we must pay the price for it. Uh, we must pay the price for the supernatural. Uh, we must pay for. It. We must pay the price for it uh, to be seen uh, in our ministries. Uh, don't be satisfied uh, with anything less. Uh, don't be satisfied uh, with anything less. Uh, don't add to it. Uh, don't remove from it. Uh, don't try to substitute it. Uh, substitute uh, uh, is it, as a brass for gold. Uh, don't try to substitute anything. Oh, don't try to know what. Is working now. What is working in this day and age? What is working somewhere? What is working in that place? No, stay with the supernatural. The church was born in the supernatural. The church must remain in the supernatural. We must crave for it. The Bible says, Jude said, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered. This was what was delivered to us. Don't be satisfied with anything less. Oh, don't be satisfied with anything less. Crave for it. Uh, oh, Paul said, uh, covet endlessly uh, the spiritual. Uh, covet endlessly the spiritual. Uh, oh, don't say, oh, I'm not seeing this thing, therefore I'm going to keep quiet. No, tarry for it. Uh, wait for it. Uh, study for it. Uh, pray for it. Uh, fast for it. Uh, do all you need to do. Uh, the supernatural must manifest uh, in your ministry. Are you listening to me, somebody? Nothing less. Jesus, a man attested to, exhibited, shown forth. God wants to show you forth. He wants to show you forth. Not for you, but for him. Oh, not for you, but for him. Irrespective of where you are. You may be a house cell leader. You may be an HOD. You may be a pastor. You may be an evangelist. You may be a disciple. There was a certain disciple called Ananias. He was one that laid hands on Paul. And Paul received his sight. He was, a, the Bible called it a certain disciple. Tell your neighbor I'm a disciple. So you qualify for the supernatural. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Certain disciple. Certain disciple. Tell husband said the first, the first person that he, he laid hands on, right? That was sick. The person said the person died. But you know why he didn't stop? Are you listening to me? I'm not here to teach. I'm here to stay up. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, ah, if I give that word of knowledge and, and nobody responds, so be it. I go to the next one. <laughs> I go to the next one. Glory to God. Ah, 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 it, does that mean that it was not genuine? That's your business. I go to the next one. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Glory to God. After all, Jesus Christ laid hands on somebody. Uh, uh, he, the, the guy saw men like trees. Uh, he didn't get fully healed the first time. He laid hands on him again. Hallelujah. So if Jesus could lay hands twice, uh, me, I can lay hands 1,000 times. Are you listening to me? What's the most important thing? The job uh, has got uh, to be done. Are you listening to me? It's time to rise up. 
It's time to rise up as a church. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. You've got the power in you. It's in you. I'm here to stir it up. Paul says, set up the gift that has been given to you by the laying hand of hands of the presbytery. You don't need the presbytery. To... The gift is there because the Holy Ghost is there. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Shout, I've got the Holy Ghost! That's all you need. That's all you need. Tell three people, that's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. All you need. You've got the Holy Ghost. You've got the Holy Ghost. My speech and my preaching are not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but their water in the demonstration of the spirit which is the power of God are you listening to me I'm not trying to prove that God is more powerful I don't, God does not need me to prove that he is more powerful Jesus didn't come to prove that God is more powerful Jesus came to help so your motive must be right are you listening to me your motive what must be? Your motive must be right. So help men. Men, I'm sure every one of us here, you, you must have experienced someone sick, sick, sick unto death. I mean, imagine, imagine that supernatural move of God. Just, just don't kill yourself. You will what? You will rise again. Oh my God. Oh my God. You can't buy that with a million dollars. Are you listening to me? You can't buy that with a million dollars. Oh, Glevere Mr. Baha'i. Oh, you may just be the slave who will point Naaman. Oh, to where Elisha the prophet is. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was a slave under a master. But you know what? It did not stop the supernatural. It didn't stop her from announcing. I know a prophet in the land. Oh, in Israel. Oh, if you go to him, he may be able to help you. Naaman was a rich man. He was a general. Oh, he had fought many battles. Oh, he was a wealthy man. He had slaves under him. Uh, and there was this tiny little girl. Uh, oh, who, who, who was insignificant? Uh, who probably nobody... They didn't even mention her name. Uh, because they didn't know her name. Uh, she was nameless. Uh, but you know what? Uh, she knew a God. Uh, nobody needs to know your name. Uh, they only need to know a God. Uh, the God who is in you. Uh, it's my, not my name that matters. Uh, it's the God that I carry. Uh, oh, I'm a pointer uh, to that God. Uh, to that Jesus. Uh, oh, who came to save, to save and to deliver her, to deliver her from death, to deliver her from sin, to deliver her from sickness. Be bold to declare it. Are you listening to me, somebody? Be bold to declare it. Jesus heals, Jesus saves, Jesus delivers. Don't, don't you. Aren't you odd when you see Pastor Kumui at over 80? See running all over the place. Uh, see holding crusade. Uh, see saying the same thing. Uh, Jesus saves. Uh, Jesus heals. Uh, Jesus delivers. Uh, he still says it. Uh, he still lays hands on the sick. Uh, he still commands devils. Uh, and listen to me. Oh, things are happening in that ministry. And you know what? And you are sitting down. How old are you? You are 20 something. You are 30 something. Uh, oh, you, oh, all, all you are after is Lord, 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 give me money. Come on. There is much more than money. I've seen rich people cry. 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 Who will deliver me? Who will deliver me? It got to a point. Ojutiowo. What is the English translation? Money is, money is shame. <laughs> but they are waiting for you. That there is a God in Israel. That you can point hands. If you can just tell them. Oh, would you mind? Let me lay hands on you. Would you mind? Oh, at that point, uh, the person is sick. Uh, the person is dying. Uh, he won't mind anything. Uh, he won't mind anything. Uh, and you know what? Uh, you can be bold. Uh, 
Stop just pray. Don't stop our prayer now for boldness. Exercise it. Lay hands on that person. What about if it doesn't get well? You are not the healer. Jesus is a healer. Let him do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why we are going to end this session with some more rejoicing. Because joy, it, it, it just loosens you. It loosens that self-consciousness. You know, in releasing the supernatural, hallelujah, you've got to be less self-conscious. You know, that was what was the problem of those disciples. When, that, when that, they brought that epileptic boy, Right? When Jesus said that at this time, go ahead and said by prayer by fasting. It was to fast off their self consciousness. It wasn't that the demon was more, more powerful. It was, they were too self conscious and too conscious of their physical environment. Are you listening to me? Lay hands on the person. What's your job? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall. They shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall lay hands. Who will do the laying on of hands? 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 I can't hear it there. Who will do the laying on of hands? Who will do the healing? Who will do the healing? How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. And they went about doing good. Healing uh, all those uh, oppressed of the devil. By the stripes of Jesus, uh, we are healed. Uh, he paid the price. He himself took our infirmities uh, and bore our sicknesses uh, upon his own body on the tree. That we've been dead to sin, may live unto righteousness. By whose stripes uh, you were healed. Uh, who is the healer? Jesus. Uh, who is the one that lays hands? Uh, who is the vehicle? You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whose business is it if the person doesn't get healed? Who is disgraced? Who is disgraced? Who is disgraced? He said he will not disgrace you. So if, you, if he will not disgrace you, then it means that he himself is not prepared to be disgraced. So he will prove himself. He will prove himself. He will prove himself. He's just waiting for you. He's just waiting for you. Stand to your feet and rejoice over that. Come on, come on. Glory, 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 glory. Wait, 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 wait. Some people don't know how to rejoice. How do you rejoice? You laugh, you shout, you jump, you laugh. You shout, you jump, you dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, do some more, 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 do some more. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. I do miracles. Come on, tell your neighbor, I do miracles. I do miracles. I do miracles. My hands are healing hands. My mouth will speak good. In the name of Jesus, demons flee. In the name of Jesus, sickness bows. In the name of Jesus, the message of salvation, it goes forth through me. It will not be resisted by any demonic force. In the name of Jesus, shout hallelujah. Somebody rejoice in the name of Jesus. I'm sure you can do better than that. Somebody rejoice in the house this afternoon. Is that the best you can do? 
Somebody rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, we won't break this flow. Amen. And we're going to go into the second word section. And it's my singular honor this afternoon to bring up stage my brother, our friend, our pastor. And I'm sure that God is set to move us into the next phase of this meeting. And uh, one thing I want us to please be ready for, and like everyone that has been coming has been saying, there's an activation going on in this place. And I want to trust God that our ministries will not remain the same again. We have taught. We have preached. It's time to demonstrate the Spirit of God. Now, one, have, one scripture that has been bubbling my spirit lately is that Paul was speaking. He said, whenever we gather. He said, whenever we gather. Whenever. He said, there will be some. He said, there will be teaching. He said, there will be tongues. He said, there will be interpretation. There will be revelation. You know what I felt? The church at the shooting. We have not been expressing the full expression of the spirit. And it's time that the church will come into this dimension. Now, with Jesus' joy, welcome with me, my brother, the senior pastor of the Noble Christian Center, Reverend Bayo de Uyeko. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We've been so blessed, so refreshed. Can we just lift up hands one more time? We're so grateful, Father. Lord, reign it. Blessed be the rock and the rock of our salvation is exalted. The Lord reign it. Blessed be the rock and the rock of our salvation is exalted. The Lord, the Lord. Blessed be the rock and the rock of our salvation is exalted. The Lord reign it. Blessed be the rock and the rock of our salvation is exalted. Oh, the Lord reign it. Father, we're so grateful. We're so thankful. Your love for us is overwhelming. 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 You care about us. You take care of us. You supply our needs. You meet us every step of the way. You correct our mistakes. You take care of our failures. You will never leave your own. You will never forsake your own. That's why we're bold to say, the Lord is our helper. We will not be afraid. There is nothing that man can do unto us. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. The news just came concerning the venue. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. He will never leave you. He will never forsake. Now you stand your ground and don't be afraid. I saw two angels sent to your ministry to effect the issue we have with the venue. You will not be ashamed. You will not be embarrassed. Stand your ground. Help is on the way. Provision is coming. 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 The work of God will not close down. No, 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 it won't. It won't. Yes, it's true. Now you settled in your heart to leave, to leave the country. But it's a check 
you are trying to ignore. There's a check on the inside you are trying to ignore. Don't ignore the check. Pay attention to that check. You will leave, but it's not time. It's not time. If you leave now, you will struggle. There will be much struggle. Oh, so much trouble. You'll be like a fish out of water. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Stay with me. Let me work it out. Don't go that route. Don't go that way. There is a better way. I will take you by the better way. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We exalt you this morning. You're walking in our midst. Your power is Susu Brada Castele Bruste Kiste. See Susu Brada Gachte. Es Susu Grata Gite. Ekugu Kesise Fredile Estes Susu Bruguta. What is happening? What is happening? That's the question you keep asking. Am I called? Did he send me? You look at the numbers. It's not impressive. You look on the other side. There seem to be many. But there's more in these ones than in the ones over there. So pay attention to that which I placed upon your lips to teach these ones. For they are not few number. They are mighty in strength. And the time will come when the seed on the inside will germinate. And when it does, harvest will come from everywhere. 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 So do not be weary in well-doing. For you will reap if you don't give up. So there's no giving up. There's no fainting. I brought you here to tell you not to give up. Not to faint. Waters will come. The plant will grow. There will be fruit. There will be abundance of provision. And all shall be well. Glory to his name. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. Let's have our seats. Father, we thank you. When pastor preached, I felt like saying that the meeting should have been called contending for the supernatural. Everybody has just eaten one spot or the other and I just want to say a few things in a few minutes. Glory to God. We're speaking about boldness in activating the supernatural. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to read from verse 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 4, just to remind us and again stir us up. Because it's not given to some, it's given to all. You see, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they all began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. So all spoke, all received, all were filled, and all flowed in the Spirit. 120, all at the same time. Now, that dis- destroys every argument you may have about the things of the Spirit. All had the same teacher. All received the same instruction. All were under the same cloud. All saw the same thing. All heard the same sound. All spoke with tongues. 120. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. I preached that way to Catholics. I don't want to speak in tongues. Mary, the mother of Jesus, spoke in tongues. So if you believe in Mary, the mother of Jesus, you too will speak in tongues. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, you will speak in tongues also. So if it is all, that means it's an inheritance that belongs to every single one who is born again. So it's not exclusive to some men. Now, some men may have worked in it more than you and I have worked in it, but it belongs to all. It's a joint inheritance. Glory to God. So Paul's testimony, look at his testimony. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul says, such trust we have in Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killed, but the Spirit giveth life. This is what they said. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. If there's a study we're doing, if there's a way we're praying, it has to be that a New Testament minister must understand. Your sufficiency must not and has never been of yourself. Your sufficiency is of God, who also has made you sufficient in himself. So his sufficiency is what makes you an able minister of the New Testament. It says, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The word letter there means that which is written versus that which has been fulfilled. So there are people who minister what is written. I say written now. It's talking about the Old Testament scriptures or Holy Scriptures. It says, that was a promise of what was going to come. It now says, you are not a minister of what is to come. You are a minister of what has come. 
So it says the letter kill, it doesn't mean the letter destroys. It means that which will be caused to cease operating. That's what it means, letter killer. The English translation is a little funny. But what it means, the letter killer doesn't mean the letter kills you. No. It means the letter was designed such a way to give way where reality comes in. That's what it means, the letter killer, or it will be brought to an end when reality begins to manifest. It says, you are an able minister of the spirit, which is the reality of the letter. Hallelujah. Remember, the woman Jesus met by the well. She began to argue with Jesus based on what she knew. It says, are you greater than our father? Our fathers worship in this mountain. But you Jews say, in Jerusalem, we may not to worship. Then Jesus said that. <laughs> you know not what you worship for salvations of the Jews. The hour cometh and now is. When you shall neither in this mountain, nor in Jerusalem worship the father. So Jesus saying, both you and the Jews are wrong. None of you is right in your interpretation. Isn't that something? None of you are right. You shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem because God is a spirit. And they that worship him, we worship him in spirit because the spirit is the reality. What is the spirit according to 2 Corinthians chapter 3? The spirit is the fulfillment of what is promised. And the promise is that Christ will be in you as a hope of glory. Glory to God. So Christ in you now. And that truth is the gospel we're preaching everywhere we go. Because it is easy for men to accept that God is with them. It is easy for them to accept that God is for them. But even ministers don't believe God is in them. Ministers don't believe God is in them. Check out the way we pray. Father, as we're going on this journey, go with us. But he said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. How can you invite somebody who says, I won't go? You see, it shows in our services. It shows in our singing. It shows in our statements. That we really don't believe because the minute you recognize it will change your speech, it will change your prayers, it will change your conduct. Paul says, Christ in you is the glory that was hoped for. Who was hoping? Abraham hoped. Moses hoped. Isaac hoped. Joseph hoped. David hoped. Isaiah hoped. But you are not hoping. You have the reality now. So when you walk in Christ in you, you are making Moses proud. David is excited when you are singing. He lives in me. He lives in me. The whole rock of Israel lives in me now. Not he will live. No, he lives in me now. That's what you're doing. Until we align in tenses, in prayer, in speech, we will not have a full expression. The first experience Saul of pastors ever had with Jesus. No wonder his epistles were different. Imagine meeting Jesus for the first time and the one you are meeting who you are persecuting is telling you, so, so, why are you persecuting me? And Paul was like, I have never met you. Who are you? I know the one I put in prison. I know the one I killed over there. But who are you? He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. In other words, the first introduction of Jesus to Saul was identifying with the saints. Everyone you touch, you are touching me. Because the one that sanctifies and they who are sanctified, they all have one father. So he's not ashamed to call us brethren. If he's not ashamed, are you ashamed to identify with him? That when you are walking, these are the legs of Jesus. These are the hands of Jesus. This is the mouth of Jesus. This is the life of Jesus. I have the life of God in me. It is not pride. It is humility of the highest order. It is pride for you to speak against the counsel of God. I hope God will use me. No, it's beyond hope. Christ has risen. The spirit is on your inside. Uh -uh, it's no longer hope. It's a reality now. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. We believe in praying and fasting, but we don't rest in praying and fasting. Uh -uh, praying and fasting cannot raise Jesus from the dead. Uh -uh, if he's not risen, but if he's risen, 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 there is forgiveness of sins. There is healing. There is miracles. There are signs. There are wonders because he is risen. So we don't fast to make him do things. We fast to embrace what he has done. Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17. He had told us in verse 3. Blessed be the God, and is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessing. That is, blessing of the Spirit. Or the Spirit is a blessing. 
He has blessed us with all. All means all, nothing less. You can't add any other thing. Every position, every stature, every structure, every placement, every blessing, every inheritance, he has blessed us or endowed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies and the heavenlies is in Christ. So he now says, after I began to explain, he has made you and I accepted in the beloved. So no more condemnation. In other words, it's not your qualification, it is his qualification. He qualified you, he sanctified you by himself. He brought you into glory. Where is your address? Glory. You have to think this way. You have to think this way. Because if you don't think this way, you can walk. In. See, if they wake you up 2 a.m. in the night, and you heard Eba before you went to bed, pardon me. I don't dislike Eba. <laughs> if you heard Eba when you, and you feel heavy, you don't consult your emotions, you consult the word of God. Because whether you are asleep or awake, Christ lives in you. He made you an able minister. What you need is a constant, present tense awareness of the fact that he lives in you now. And as he was, he is. And will forever be. If he healed, he still heals. He doesn't have Wednesdays or Thursdays or Mondays or Tuesdays. Ah, uh -uh. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will always heal. He will always heal at all times. So there has to be a present tense consciousness of the fact that he lives in you today. He lives big in you. He told the disciples, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Lo, the I am is with you. He says, now it is always, even unto the end. Imagine Jesus saying, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye. <laughs> what does that mean? All authority is given unto me. Go ye. They knew. Go ye means all. All authority given unto me means all authority is given to us. Because the head of the body and the body are one. And as says, go ye means as you are going, it is me going. You know, if it's possible for you to sing the spirit, that there is nowhere you went that it wasn't working with you. Why did he have to ascend physically from their side? Because they had been used to sinning for three and a half years. Used to sinning physically. But there was a greater reality. He was not living in them, but they couldn't see it. So he had to do something to make them realize. Because they were living by the senses. Now let's translate from senses to faith. By the spirit, which is, I mean, you now, by faith, recognize it, not by seeing me. Whether you see me or not, I am with you always. Even unto the end. So he's leaving their side. It's not a disappearance. It's a coming to live inside them. That's why when it was time to heal, and Peter and John, at the hour of prayer, they were yet to pray. They were yet to pray. So in case you are resting so much on prayer, uh -uh, let prayer take its place. We believe in prayer. We believe in hours of prayer. But that's not what produces result. Prayer makes you aware and supplies the results. But somebody gives the results. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. So important that we understand. Then Peter said something that has never been spoken by the lips of a man until Jesus rose from the dead. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. He didn't say such as I borrow. Sir, this thing doesn't work from time to time. Uh -uh. He is risen. He is seated. We're seated together. If he's risen, this thing is a testimony to the father he's risen. His reason is not just an event, it's an abiding reality. So every single time where I go, because it's reason, such as I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus. The only reason why that man wouldn't have gotten up if it's not true that Jesus rose. What do we need? Just a little boldness that they prayed in Acts chapter 4. And now, Lord, behold their threatness and grant unto your servants that with all boldness may preach your word. By stretching forth your hand to heal, and as signs and wonders may be wrought in the name of your holy child Jesus. Grant unto us what boldness, because it is a reality whether we preach it or not. It has happened. What we need now is boldness to stand with the truth. That's why Acts chapter 1, from chapter 2 all the way to chapter 5, you notice one consistent thing the Pharisees and the elders were angry with them, not because of the miracles, but because of the message. They didn't want them to preach. They were angry because they preached unto people through Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. That was the problem. The message is the problem. 
The message is where the attack comes. Because the message is the key to unlocking the supernatural. Every time you preach that is reason, science flow to prove, permit to use this word, the degree of his high lifeness. When I'm speaking tongues, it is a testimony to the degree of the aliveness of Jesus. That's what tongues is. That's why when Peter preached on the opening, because after I quoted Joel, he began to quote David with respect to salvation. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand. Why are we speaking tongues? He's seated at the right hand. Why are we healing? He's seated at the right hand. Why are your sins forgiven? He's seated at the right hand. Why are people getting healed? He's seated at the right hand. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He has made you an able minister of the New Testament. Not of the promises that were made, but of the reality that has come to pass. It was a promise. It's now what? A reality. So, like we were instructed earlier, don't be afraid to lay hands when they challenged Peter. After the man that was crippled from his mother's womb started walking. Peter said, why are you looking at us as though by our power or our own holiness? But God has glorified his son Jesus. Whom you killed and God raised from the dead. By his name, through faith in his name, has given this man this perfect oldness, soundness before you all. Where to preach in the name. Where to speak in the name. Where to demonstrate in the name. Where to speak like Peter. Silver and gold, I don't have, but such. I have tongues. I have interpretation. I have word of knowledge. I have word of wisdom. I see visions. It's part of my inheritance. Where do we get defeated? And we say, Pastor, I don't really flow in word of knowledge. Eh? You don't flow in our inheritance. How can you use your mouth to disqualify when he qualified you? This is where we miss it. A pastor, you say, I, I don't really uh, see visions. My own is just to write. Eh, that's the portion of the inheritance that you accepted. So somebody comes to you and shares more with you of the inheritance that belongs to all of us. Sir. Yes, sir. It belongs to all of us. Didn't you hear what they said? It shall come to pass in the last days, said the Lord. I will pour out my spirit. Peter had a word. I will pour out of. Joel said, I will pour out. Peter said, I will pour out of. Peter said, the spirit is now inside. It should not come out. I will pour out of. That is, when God is praying now, he will take what is inside and put it outside. What, what is the proof that God is praying now? Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. The next verse, upon my servants and admittees will I pour out my spirit. In other words, those who are your sons and your daughters, when they start prophesying, they will become my servants and admittees. You call them your sons and daughters when they step into ministry. They now become my servants and my handmaids. That's what he said. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. What was Peter describing? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began. They, how did they do? They just began. What did Jesus do them? Begin. When do you begin? When you begin. Why are you not beginning? Because you didn't want to begin. And that's what in case they missed it, in the epistles, Paul's now come. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the Son also. I will see. It is will. It is me. Eh, because I have it. It's not borrowed. It's not borrowed. In case you miss it, Paul, the same person said, quench not the Spirit. That means you can quench. You can quench. You have power to quench because you have power to yield. So when you are not yielding, what are you doing? You are quenching. You are that powerful. <laughs> but be powerful in the right direction. Yield to the spirit. Be not drunk in one when it's excess. But be filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourselves in what? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and manufacturing melody in your heart to the Lord. He says, manufacture it. It's on the inside. Let the spirit that is hidden be seen outside. That is what the church is about. We put what you cannot see. What is inside? In teaching is for identification and conduct. What is outside is for demonstration. So in case you think there's no power, we begin to stir up. And if you sing it correctly, something will bubble up on the inside. 
Somebody says why? Because you are an able minister of the New Testament. Out of the letter. Every time you use the right tenses, something happens on the inside that you will have to convince yourself to ignore. Such as I have. <laughs> I've got many times. Peter. <laughs> Bros, Peter. 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 Be careful. <laughs> Be careful. What if? <laughs> Such as I have. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. What is name? The reputation. The standing. The accomplishments. In the reputation of that man of Galilee. I command you stand upright. He was too slow. Peter jacked him up. Hey. No, 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 no. He endured us with power. Glory to God. He has no power. And these are the days of his power. Psalm 110 is being fulfilled. In the days of your power, your people shall be spontaneous. They will act. Pastor was teaching us earlier. And I noticed some of us are still a bit stiff. How <laughs> about rejoicing? All this shouting. Is it really necessary? Ah. Ah. I'm just telling you. I mean, tell me. You, 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 I mean, you are a minister of the gospel, and you don't know the reality of the gospel lives in you. Like Isaiah chapter 12 has been fulfilled. In that day, you will say, and the day has come. In that same day, with joy, you will draw waters out of the well of salvation. You say, when you want to see the things of the spirit, you use joy to draw, like a fetcher. Your face is hard. You are squeezing your face. And Jesus said, be careful for nothing. I don't understand. Why do we find it so easy to cry, but difficult to rejoice? I don't understand. If you want to raise a local assembly of people that are constantly victorious as a servant of God, learn how to rejoice personally and learn how to teach people to rejoice. We were praying. It was this assembly. This place we were in. Yes, we were behind. We were supposed to pay a particular amount of rent. But the time was not even yet. We got a letter from the owner of the building that said, no questions, not because we couldn't pay. She just decided, I don't want you here again. Call for a prayer meeting. We were praying as a church. We were praying. As we were praying, I saw three angels walking. I told the church members, I just saw this. I don't know what it means. Common sense tells you. You don't know what it means. What were you doing before you saw them? You were praying. So go back to praying. That one is not with, with revelation. It's just common sense. What were you doing before you saw them? You were praying. So go back to what? Praying. Praying how? In the spirit. Because see, God has never asked the church to start and close. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Is it a shop? Is it shop? Something that comes from resurrection. Is it shop? No, 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 no. Treasures will come. Of course, I don't even know why this is happening. Have you forgotten? That persecution arises for the word's sake. Why are you surprised trouble is coming as though this is something new? If trouble is not coming, are you moving in the same direction with Satan? Ah, something that when it comes, you should eat it as like snacks. That you, you are small. Bring the other one that's coming after. We are here for you. Victory is loud. 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 Our victory is loud. Our victory is loud. Angels came in. And the Spirit of God said that they came in response to your prayer about the venue. Say, so what should we do? Say, tell everybody to rejoice. Oh my God. The whole church began to rejoice. Pastor defined rejoicing. It is shouting, it is singing, it is laughing, it is dancing, it is running all at the same time. So there was only pandemonium here after we had prayed. And as they were rejoicing, I saw the same angels. They got towards the door. They vanished one by one. That day I got to learn about their names, that they are actually for this assembly. And they told me all assemblies have their angels. So but many of them are dormant. Because what is not being preached is not Christ glorified. And they don't know how to receive instructions after, after the Christ word glorified. They don't know how to. It's not even necessary that we see angels. It's not. It was just granted because of what was happening. Two weeks after, letter was withdrawn. 
not only did we get what we needed to pay, we got over what was needed. We even did to another project out of not having anything because they cost the money to come. They went to work upon the person and it cha- everything was changed. We're not helpless. We're not orphans. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We're the church of the living God. Glory to God. You have to learn to wake up in the morning and say, there's power everywhere I look. There's power everywhere I look. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. According to the work of my power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead. And when he did, you are the product that came out. You are no mere person. You are no mere person. If you want the supernatural to be consistent, learn to rejoice consistently. Teach your people to shout. Teach them to run. Teach them to dance privately. And like I said, some of us, we feel stiff and old because we're so rooted in religion and tradition. I have news for you. At about the 117 years, and your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it, and he was glad. John chapter 8, are you older than Abraham? I said, Abraham. And he was rejoicing at the promise. You, you are in reality. And your face is hard. And your body is stiff. Is, is it that you are claiming that Abraham has more likes than you? Ah, hey, hey, come on, you. you are in the reality. And Abraham rejoiced in the promise. Abraham rejoiced that when he saw in a vision that Christ will rise. Your own is more than vision, no? <laughs> it was in Abraham's future. Your own is in your past. Christ has already risen. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Sorrow is passed away. Sickness is passed away. Defeat is passed away. Every wrong thing has passed away. All things have become new now. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And that's why once you don't understand that it's with joy, with draw. Even the instructions you receive, you will misinterpret them. You want to complain. The Spirit says rejoice now. You're like, well, can you change your answer? Can you come and learn it? What's all that? Hey, hey, if that thing can get here, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm just telling you. The world is telling you long after. Long after the Bible says, a merry heart do it good like medicine. Doctors are now telling you, learn to laugh more. Uh, that's old news. It's in the gospel already. The joy that I will give you, no man take it from you. No man take it from you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Throughout this season, as you pray and fast, don't finish a day without rejoicing. Instructions will come. Listen, listen. I'm not saying it's always easy. I've been confused. And I acted on a prompting. I rejoiced and clarity came. What is rejoicing? Our nature. Our environment. It is what Christ has done. That's our environment. It doesn't matter. I mean, I had an associate one time. They were having a staff meeting. I'm going to run up now. And they were plotting to excuse him from the company in the meeting. And he saw it. He said, can you please excuse me? I want to go to the convenience. <laughs> the convenience is good from time to time. <laughs> if you know, that's your inner chamber. He got there, he spoke tongues and rejoiced. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Began to confess and began to rejoice and laughed. He came back. The head of the team that was planning to a victim was evicted. Because no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. The enemy doesn't have an answer to your kind. When he died, you died. When he was quickened, you were quickened. When he rose, you rose. So that when he sat, you sat also. Eternally victorious. Glory to God. Lift up your hands this morning. Don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for anything less. Answers are yours. Provisions are yours. Miracles are yours. Healings are yours. The word of knowledge is yours. The word of wisdom is yours. The power gifts are yours. Everything is yours. All things are yours. Glory to God. I saw someone, your right side, I saw there's a pain. And you came with on your right side. Now, if there's anyone that has any pain, now I know how difficult this can be when you're dealing with ministers. To acknowledge that there's even any pain. 
but really if you desire instantaneous now two things not only will you be healed i want to just demonstrate something to you such as i have it's not what i'm praying for it's something i carry wherever i go you will not be healed tomorrow you'll be healed now if you have pain in any part of your body leg any pain that you are feeling i mean you can feel it now I usually use that as a sign. Let's super other cast there. Hello, cuckoo tea, blood ash there. Listen, hello, no good, Freddy, and ash there. Let's super brother got here and ash there. When we shouted earlier, the power of God came upon a number of us. Now, one or two people, I saw your legs trembling. I understand, I saw your hands, your palms began to tremble and to burn. Who is the person? I can see you. Your palms, man. Yeah, because everywhere I go is a sign that follows me. Everywhere I go now is a sign that follows me. Your leg will be trembling. Your hands will be trembling. Sometimes your leg will start shaking. And sometimes it will be all over you. It will be all over you. Just come forward. It's an activation. It's an activation. If it's your hand, let me see your hands up. If it's your hand. Man, the pain. It's pain in your side. That side. That right side. Okay. It's a pain in your leg. Okay. So, again, I want those who your, your hands are trembling or a part of your body is trembling. Just come to the side. I don't want to miss it. Ma, it's in your left hand, man. Yes, sometimes it's in one hand. Has he been there before? Has he been there before today? No. So there's an activation. The healing anointing is upon you. The healing anointing, that's one of the things that God wants you to walk in. It's upon you. So if, if it's your... No, no, I'm not talking about those who have pain, man. If you have pain, come to this side. If your body is trembling, or your hand or your leg is trembling, just come to this side. If you have any pain in your body, come to this side. We're going to do it very quickly. So where's the pain? You can feel it right now. Man, you can feel it right now too. Where? That same side. That same, that's the side of your body. Okay, you can feel it right now. Okay, so if it goes, you will know. Okay, where's the pain? Your knee, your right leg. Okay, where's the pain? Right leg, okay. Everybody's right. <laughs> it's on the right side, everybody. Okay, man, you're feeling it. Is, is it pain you're feeling? Okay, uh, because it's intensifying because you're in front. I called you from because it's intensifying while you're in front. Where's it? Your, your leg, okay. Glory to God. You love us forever. You love us forever. You love us forever, Lord. You love us forever. You love us forever. You love us forever. You love us forever. You love me. You love me, Lord. Forever. You love me. Forever. You love me. Now, because of activation, I'm doing this tricky for activation, please. Peter said, why do you look on us as though by our own power? But God has exalted his son Jesus. Will you move crucified? That's what he said. God has exalted his son Jesus. By faith in his name, this man stands. But Peter said something crucial. He said, look on us. Look at me, man. Just keep your focus. See, the power of God is coming on you. The power of God is coming on you. He said, look on us. You're looking at me too, sir. Just look at me. Now check the pain. What's happening? In the name of Jesus. Look at me, man. Just look at me. Check it out. No, that's casual. Be bold, man. Don't be afraid. What's happening? Any sensation?
What's happening? The pain is no more. What's happening, sir? It's gone. It's gone too. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. There's a force field. As I'm standing and moving from one person, there's a force field of God's healing power flowing. So I need you to be conscious that there's a force field flowing. So I'm not doing magic. I'm working with some principles. There's a force field flowing. And so now when I'm missing to the person beside you, now she's feeling the power. Before she told me about the pain, where the pain is for the first time, the power is flowing all over. Because who is doing the healing? I'm standing there but Jesus is there and doing the work. So I'm only here to represent in terms of channeling the power. That's what is happening. So it's already working. It's already working. That's why that trembling is going on. And that's why you notice that there's sort of that trembling I also feeling also. That's the power strengthening every nerve, every tissue, every muscle involved there. It's aligning back now. And the pain went down from 10. Right now, it's as though it's at 2. Okay, so the trembling has increased now because I'm standing right in front of you. Don't resist. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Just let it do its work. Yes, sir. You said your hands were trembling. Uh, your right hand it's it's trembling right now i can okay i'm 
today, from today, from today, the nerves are stable. Your nerves are stable. Your hands are healed. Your nerves are stable from today, from today, from today. Healing is yours. Wholeness is yours. You can't feel it again. It's gone. It will never come back. Now for you, on a scale of 1 to 10, where was it before? Let's say, what page of the game? What page of the game? Okay, so right now, where was it? One to 10, less than 5. Okay. Now, for you, the power is working. You felt it. Okay. Now it was at 10. On the scale of 1 to 10, it was at 10. Now it's less than 5. So for you, it's been gradual. It's been gradual, but it's going down. So it's just going down. For some, it was instantly for you, gradual. But the same power that's working them is working through you and is claiming the pain away. Now, no sima tula yatilo, su ada kapite, liaka susukute, liada shite, eso, zusefre di ala kate, estorola katina anjte. And I will use you to work on people at our paralysis. And their limbs will strengthen out under your touch. For much more than healing is taking place, an endowment is rising to the surface. And after today, you will find out that when you come around, they will say a burning sensation is all over them. And when that it lifts, healing will be complete. Watch out for the sign. Healing will be complete. Give him praise and give him thanks. Give him praise and give him thanks. You can go. You can go. It's done. It's done. It's gone now. Glory to God. Can we lift up hands and thank him? Peter demonstrated because he saw Jesus demonstrate. I also learned by watching somebody else demonstrate. So when somebody demonstrates, we learn. We learn and we see what we can do that Jesus is doing through somebody else. That's what the Bible says. That someone like as, as wonderful as C.L. Osborne came back discouraged and saw a man like him demonstrating. And when he was demonstrating, yeah, Jesus said, you can do that too. And that was beginning of his ministry. Let's lift up our hands in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for activations. That from today, utterance is given to your servants. And where there was discouragement, there's supernatural encouragement. That as they go back, their words will carry weight into minister power. Lives will be changed. Saints will be activated. Men will be healed. There will be an increase in numbers. There will be a mighty harvest in the name of Jesus. Let's give you thanks. Hallelujah. If you are happy, shout hallelujah. Okay, if you have caught up with the spirit of joy and not ordinary joy, joy forever, shout a bigger hallelujah. Uh, forever you will rejoice in Jesus' name. Um, I was one of the students of Wabi, uh, the first set of Wabi at Lagos. And by the grace of God, in the same Wabi, I'm a lecturer now. I give glory to God uh, who had made me met up with uh, Pastor Timmy because I heard at that conference what I have never heard about Jesus Christ. And since then, I've been learning little by little, and by the grace of God, uh, the confidence I had never gotten from 1981 that I gave my life to Jesus, I caught up with it in the year 2019. I knew Christ in the reality in the real. Hallelujah. Uh, please, every message you are listening to, every teachings you are listening to, don't throw it away. Go and study. Go and check whether it is or not. And uh, if you are humble in the spirit, and if you are not proud, 
automatically the Holy Spirit will deliver to your hand, heart the truth. And uh, you will see nothing uh, above you again, but you see yourself above every other thing because all things are yours. Hallelujah. Please, all the present students, the faculty members are waiting for you outside. Now, please, march outside as uh, you'll be prepared for uh, the procession uh, very, very soon. Please, if you are inside, please, you can rise up now and meet them there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, like in the, when we were preaching the law, teaching the law, there are many, many things we say because we want people to give. But I believe in the days of reality. We know God is our Father. Hallelujah. Go and check it well. Jesus never called God God until when he was on the cross, bearing the sins of every one of us. And God, the Father, could not look at that place. Then he said, my God, my God, because he was carrying this thing for us. He was human, seriously, then. Every other place, he refers to God as my Father. So if our Father has work on earth, it is the responsibility of we, children, to carry on the work. Hallelujah. I will not, at this point, uh, forget to tell you that before, I was a Muslim. And I thank God that one day on the screen, on, on, on radio like this, I wanted to go to the mosque, and I was hearing from the radio, this young man, where will you spend your eternity? It was like something stamped my legs. And as from that night, I stopped that religion, and Jesus has never disappointed me. Hallelujah. So if God is our father, I don't want to push you for anything. Please bring out something good to support this ministry. Hallelujah. If, you, if every one of us will look at uh, what has happened here today, we know that it costs a lot, a lot, a lot of money. But by the grace of God, when God calls you out, he stands for you. And he uses his children, among who I am one and you are one. Please, shall we please rise up on our feet and uh, put up something good. Something, we know something good. Hallelujah. We know something. Hallelujah. We know something. And the Lord bless us in Jesus. And please, let's raise them up unto God. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we give, it's our responsibility. And uh, because you are our father, and as we give, Father, we know that as we are giving, you are already giving back. Daddy, thank you for this. We rejoice because we are chosen, we are qualified to bring something out and give to further your work. Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, as we give, more, more joy be added unto our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. And as we give, this ministry progress mightily in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Okay, please, before we give, uh, this vehicle, CL registration number CL157 EKY CL157 EKY please your attention is needed outside please Hallelujah please ushers will be Around you, please. You can be seated as uh, the choristers give us a wonderful. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I'd like us to cast our offerings. Our love seed will join our hearts. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with word of accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with word of accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Can we do the song together? Every praise.
It is only the spiritual person that, that brings forth the supernatural. The more conscious we are about, our, about us being spirit being, we determine how much of the supernatural that we bring forth. The supernatural is not the same as the physical realm. The supernatural realm is the spiritual realm. You are a spirit. You only possess a soul and dwells inside of a body. Your born again spirit is eternal. Your born again spirit is perfect. Your born again spirit is righteous. Your born again spirit has the capacity of contacting God. I hear his voice everywhere I go. I see his face everywhere I go. That will be your experience after now. Yeah. You will hear God's voice clearly. Yeah. You will see into the realm of the supernatural. Like a man looking at the, at, the, at, the, at the television. You will see into the realm of the supernatural. Bringing forth blessings for mankind. Bringing forth blessings for mankind. Because the blessings of the Lord is for us. Is the all-sufficient God? Is the Father God, the big-breasted God? We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. And those blessings will be brought forth into the realm of the physical. Healings and miracles. Signs and wonders. Healings and miracles. Signs and wonders. Healings and miracles. Signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We used to sing this song. Demons tremble at his presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about him is great. But I'd like you to sing it this way today. Demons tremble at my presence. What a mighty God I serve. Glory, glory. Everything written about me is great. Can you sing it one more time? Let's rise up and rejoice and sing it. Demons tremble at my presence. What a mighty God I serve. Glory, glory, Everything written about me is great. 
You are great, you are great, Lord, you are great. You are great. You are great, you are great, Lord, you are great. You are great. You are great. Everything written about you is great. Hallelujah. Let's take a seat. Praise God. Everything written about us is great. Because everything that is written about him was written about you. You are seated together with him in the heavenly places far above. All principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named not only in this world but also in the world to come. Everything written about him is written about you. You will only discover yourself as you search who Christ is. Hallelujah. As you know who he is, you are just looking at yourself in the mirror. You want to know who you really are in Christ? Just search for the things that are written concerning Christ. Everything you see written about Christ is written about you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So quickly to our graduating students, uh, I just quickly want to do this within the next 15 minutes, then we can take our lunch before we go this afternoon. So I want to urge us not to hurry out. We are going to break the bread together. Amen. Praise God. You know, the one we do in church is, uh, you know, yes. But this one, we will break the bread together. Proper one. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that was the way they were doing it before, you know, hallelujah. Glory, to, glory be to Jesus. Amen. So I have the forms of winning Army Bible School here. Uh, by the way, I just want to quickly appreciate, uh, you know, God's servant, Reverend Jegede from Ijoko. He hosts our campus at Ijoko. Please let me celebrate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And also Reverend I Saint, is he still in the, in the venue? Reverend I Saint, are you there? God bless you. We shall be beginning uh, winning Army Bible School at Okokomaiko in October. Hallelujah. Praise God. That is winning Army Bible School. Uh, we'll be starting a new session in Ota. I think um, next week, by the grace of God, uh, in Pastor Isaac Ogba's church. Um, and we have a session that will be kicking off in Songo. After our conference in uh, Songwater at um, Pastor David Adipoju's church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want you, um, if you have, if you, I, I just want to encourage some of us, if you have not been to our Bible school before and you want to be, this is a pre registration form. You can pick it up and just write your name. Um, and by the grace of God, we'll be starting the online Bible school. Uh, before the end of the year, by the grace of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I've been thinking, God, how do I even do this online thing? I, di I, do I don't even get it. You understand? But when I travel to Ghana, God just revealed. You know, it's as if I went to Ghana to go and take revelation. Hallelujah. So coming back, I uh, just God gave me clarity as to what we are supposed to do. The Bible school is not a regular Bible. It's not a theological school. It's just we are teaching the fundamental principles of the doctrines of Christ. Hallelujah. To open our understanding into who we have become in Christ. That's all. We have 16 courses for the basic certificate course. And um, we have the leadership certificate, of which we have not started anyway. Uh, and we will start that very soon. I'm not sure, maybe next year, maybe upper year, I'm not sure yet. And we'll also be having the advanced certificate course. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, I want to encourage all of us, you know, uh, Pastor David Adepoju said since 1981, and I, I know that he has been a pastor uh, for many years, you understand. Uh, but from his testimony... In fact, you know, sometimes when you do some things, you don't know how powerful those things are. But when people give testimony, God now show you how powerful what you are doing is. So it's not every time that we see 
testimonies or people give testimonies. Even though they don't give testimony, God is always working and changing and transforming lives. But, you know, sometimes those small testimony out of ten, when one comes to give testimony, it encourages, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the preacher. It encourages us and it helps us to understand that God is actually here. Hallelujah. Oh, we are not moved by what we see, nor what we hear, or, or nor what we feel. But we are moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. And I know of a surety that the word of God is changing life everywhere it is preached. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word of God is changing life everywhere it is preached. We also run an online Bible, I mean, Bible uh, class every Saturday. While we were here, the class was going on. Amen. So some of us, we go back home to read, you know, <laughs> what is in the class. And we know we have people having opportunity from all over the world to join that class. Uh, in any case, the teacher that took us this morning is, uh, took us from the UK. You understand? And there are students in the UK, Ghana, Canada, US, all over Nigeria, and uh, every part of the world. Uh, so you can join that online class. You don't need to pay anything. It's free. Uh, uh, we have close to... We have three classes because it's on WhatsApp, 256. Now I think WhatsApp is larger. Uh, I'm sure we are well over 600 uh, people on that uh, platform, okay? So you only need to send add me to SOS to 080-333-04640. 080-333-04640. That's my number. Add me to SOS to that number, and you will be added to the online platform. But if you want to attend our Bible school, um, whichever time, just put your name here, uh, your details, your location, then we can tell you, you know, um, when we'll be coming to your own location. Do you understand? Uh, because our Bible school doesn't run 24-7. We don't have that uh, capacity yet. You understand? But we, we owe those classes at sometimes so we'll be able to convey to you, for example, Okokomaiko, we start in August, Song uh, Ota, we start, uh, I mean, sorry, in October, uh, uh, Song Ota 2, we start in October. We are running a Bible school at Ijoko presently. Uh, we are halfway through. Uh, October 1, we'll be, the student will be graduating, hallelujah, at Ijoko. So even if you are at Ijoko, or you are in Song Ota, or you are in Lagos, or you are in Ibadan, anywhere, and you love to be part of the uh, uh, Bible, Bible school, just put down your name. The Bible school is not a, it's, it's just uh, eight weekends, eight Saturdays from 8 to 2 p.m. And on full-time basis, 8 to 2 p.m. for two weeks, okay? But the online class we run for four months because it's online. It's more intensive. Uh -huh. The reason is, as we give you the course, you must do assignment. That's the only way we will know that you are following the class. So you do it at your, play, at your pace, but it's four weeks, one course per week. Uh, Why uh, the weekend course, we have two courses every week. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I want to quickly charge the student, then they take their certificate, then we bust into uh, fellowship. Hallelujah. Now, what I will say to you, is avoid the trap of religion. Avoid the trap of religion. Religion is the greatest enemy of the gospel. Religion is the greatest enemy of the gospel. The devil will not fight you if you are a religious person. The devil will not fight you if you don't understand what belongs to you in God. He will only punish you for it. The devil will come after you if you understand the good news of the kingdom. In fact, you are walking again. The people that killed Jesus were not just uh, unbelievers. They were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law. They said, this man said, he's going to pull down the temple and, and raise it up the third day. They bring all manner of accusation against him. And you know what? They were religious people. They were religious people. Religion tried to serve 
God, but they are serving the God they do not really, really, really know. Jude explained, explained it very clear when he said, they are cloud without water. They are like well that has no rain. They are like wind. You know, when the cloud is so dark and it's so windy, but no rain. That is how religious people are. They are full of activities, but they are moving nowhere. They hold the key to the kingdom of heaven and lock it and put it in their pocket. They are not going in, and they will not allow those that want to go in to go in. That is how religious people are. Today, many churches are religious center. They are not the church of God. They are religious center. They are places where people go on Sunday to satisfy their conscience. Because there is something inside every man yearning for God. But you know, many do not know how to come to God. When Jesus came, what he came to do is to show us the way to the Father. He said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one can come unto the Father except by me. But you know what? Many introduce all kinds of teachings, doctrines, philosophies of men, uh, doctrines of men, looking at the law of Moses, reading from the Bible, and trying to, you know, you can use this Bible to preach anything you like. You can use the Bible to say anything you want to say. People, and many times, you know, those who do that are only religious people. Every religion, you know, uh, I won't mention them, apart from the Christian faith, are trying to please God. They create laws for themselves that they should keep in order to please God. But you can never please God. No human being can please God. Somebody came to Jesus and said, good master, what shall we do to inherit the kingdom of God? You know his reply? He said, do not call anyone good upon the earth because no man is perfect upon the earth. No man is good upon the earth. Um, our father, Abraham, the father of faith, had to trust God for him to be accepted in the beloved. The Bible says Abraham was looking forward to Christ. And that was what uh, that was what, what he was looking for. That I mean, uh, uh, that he was declared what righteous before God. Hallelujah! Praise God! So you cannot attain unto righteousness by your own effort, by the doctrines of men, by activities of men. We can only attain unto righteousness by believing in what Christ has done. Hallelujah! Praise God! So I want to encourage us. What we have been taught, to hold fast to it. Hold fast to that which you have been taught and pass it on to others. Defend the gospel. The, all the apostles defended the gospel with their life. Hallelujah. Please, defend the gospel. Defend the gospel. We have been called into a fight. And it is called the fight of faith. The fight of faith is standing for the truth of God's word. Hallelujah. Standing for the truth of God's word. That is what we have been called to do. Teaching and preaching this word everywhere we go. Hallelujah. And as you do, signs and wonders will follow you everywhere. Hallelujah. The demonstrations of the spirit, the release of the supernatural, does not work in religious people's life. It doesn't. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the flow of the spirit is not the same as religion. Yielding to the spirit is the mother of flowing in the supernatural. Yielding your vessel to be used by God. When the word is coming from your inside and God gives you a word, those words doesn't make many sometimes. You understand? But you just need to declare the word that God has given you. And that's what gives birth to what? To the supernatural. You must be a man of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. 
Praise God. So let me read this scripture in um, 2 Timothy. Then we close from there. We, 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 we file in here and quickly give out the certificate. Then we close from there. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Sorry, 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, verses uh, 13 and 14. Hold to the pattern of awesome teaching you have learned from me. A pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, Carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. Now that you know this truth, you must do what? You must guard it. Now that you know this truth, you must do what? You must guard it. You must not allow anyone, you know, to steal this truth from you. Remember the parable of the sower. Jesus said, some fell on the wayside. Some fell on the, on the rock. Some fell among tongues. And some fell on the good soil. I know that when we preach the gospel, only 25%, because from the parable of the sower, 25% is a huge number, sir. Hallelujah. So, and I say, if you are going to get this gospel out, and you know that 75% of the message may fall by the wayside because of the art of people. Are you getting me? And some... May, be, may, may not stand firm in the truth that they have had. So if we are going to have more results, what are we supposed to do? We sow more seed. So our duty is to keep preaching and teaching this word. Preaching and teaching this word. The word of God is an incorruptible seed. It has the capacity of bringing forth. He said the parable, he said the seed is like a mustard seed, which when men sow, it sprouts and bring forth and become like a tree that the best of the air come to have their nest in it. This word we produce in your, in your hand in the name of Jesus is going to transform lives everywhere in the name of Jesus. Can we rise to our feet? Let the graduate, um, okay, sit down. Uh, uh, where's the registrar, please? Pastor Edward? Pastor Edward, okay. So that we call, when they call you out, the photographer you set, then we pray for them, and that, that makes it. They are just 16. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to present uh, the certificates now to the graduates, uh, and I will be needing the help of uh, our ministers to come present. I will call you when it's your turn. You bring like three, three certificates to the students. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, the first uh, set will be, you know, uh, presented by our host, that is uh, Pastor Bayode Oyekon. Please come forward, and then I will be calling the students to come and collect their certificates. So they will come. When you come, so when you get your certificate, then you just file, begin to file from that uh, angle. Hallelujah. All right, the first student, they are just, uh, don't mind the, you know, the arrangement. It's just as a, okay. Please, uh, faculty members, can you come off stage, please? If you are wearing gown, faculty member, please come off stage. <laughs> We have other faculty members that are here too, but, you know, just to, for the occasion purpose, amen. All right, the first student graduating is uh, Osusan Adebola Adekule. Let's put our hands together for, where are you? Available or absent? Okay. Next person, Odekule Samson Oluwa Timilehin.
All right. Ufete Peter Maduka. Ufete Peter Maduka. Okay. Or Chai Thomas Edison. Thank you, Pastor. Please, I welcome uh, Reverend Paul Rutra, please. <laughs> Follow who? Gabriel Olumide. Uluwa Timilei Feni Kemi Rachel. Borede Timilei Shegun. Pastor. Please join me as I welcome off stage uh, to present the next uh, certificate, Reverend Dr. Shudia. <laughs> Akadiri Miriam Ayokumi. Benjamin Adegbola. <laughs> Ola Nio, Ola Dimeji, Sunday. Thank you, Doctor. Please join me as I welcome Reverend Jegede to come help us present certificates. <laughs> Timmy David Ayomide. <laughs> Omezi David Somu. O Gerege, O Shio Kaubo Gideon. <laughs> Sorry if I, if I mispronounced your name. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Reverend. Please join me as I welcome uh, Pastor David Fulaulu to come help us present certificate. The next student is Gary's student is Peter Oda. Peter Oda. The next Gary's student is Timmy David K. Sola. And then we have a uh, Oviri Ejiro Paul. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. 
you recall? Sorry, there was a, a mix up. Uh, sorry. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, uh, so there's a mix of someone. There's also a graduate student, he called Godwin. Please help us welcome him. Uh, see come. Just take a picture with this and then we'll get you your certificate, please. Eh? He called Godwin, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So congratulations to you, graduates. God bless you. So you go and do exploits. Uh, we've been trained to teach and preach the good news of Christ. Hallelujah. The anointing of God is in you. As you cooperate with it, the anointing of God is upon you because there is an activation of God's power over your life. And they, and they went forth everywhere preaching the word, and God was walking with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders following. Please let's stretch our hands to them and let's prophesy unto them that they will go forth everywhere with this word. God walking with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders following. There is no limitation in God. We are the one that limit him with our unbelief. There is no limitation in God. 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 You can take to the gospel to every nation. There is no limitation in God. You can take the gospel to the ends of the heart. There is no limitation in God. You can flow in God's power. There is no limitation in God. Everything you need is supplied because there is no limitation in God. Resources are supplied. Resources are supplied because there is no limitation in God. There is no limitation in God. There is no limitation in God. If the project is going to call a billion dollars, there is no limitation in God. There is no limitation in God. There is no limitation in God. You need men to assist. There is no limitation in God. You need supernatural help. There is no limitation in God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, I receive your help, Lord. 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 I receive your help, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you because there is no limitation in you. We send this one forth into the world to beam the light of Christ to, the, to this generation. You say they are the light of the world. We declare that this light will shine everywhere. You say we are the salt of the earth. We declare that these ones we, we bring their, uh, the savor of Christ everywhere. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Men will come to the brightness of your dawn. Men will come to the brightness of your dawn. There is a light in you that is becoming stronger by the day. As you put it to use, it becoming stronger. Stronger and stronger. The thicker the darkness, the brighter the light. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise in Jesus. Martin, then we pray. Hallelujah. Please celebrate them as they take their seat. Please take your seat. Hallelujah. Okay. So, congratulations once again. Um, if you took the form, please fill it and submit it. We will get across to you. Hallelujah. So, oh, okay. The graduating students said they have a gift. Please come present your gift. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, I really want to thank God for this uh, opportunity to be able to study in this school. My life has changed spiritually. A lot of knowledge has been imparted in me and my fellow students. In this course, we are presenting this little token. Because of the knowledge they've imparted in us, we are saying thank you for Wabi Bible School. Please, let's clap for this beautiful school. 
So this is what we are presenting for the school on behalf of the students. Praise the Lord. So thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, okay. All the graduate sisters, please come quickly. Let's take pictures together. Quickly. They don't cover us. So bring this thing down small. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Please let me celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> so we have come to the end of the conference officially. I uh, will go for uh, the lunch now, after which we close from there. I want to thank everyone for being present here today. Please, can you help me celebrate everyone? <laughs> Head count that was submitted was 214. Please, can we give God a round of applause? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Can you help me celebrate our host, Pastor Bayode Oyekon, for opening the door of Noble House to us. Please help me celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. God bless you. And to our faculty, you know, you are powerful people teaching the word night and day. I've been encouraged by that faculty. Every one of us, iron is sharpening iron by the day. And uh, thank you for your humility. Thank you for allowing God to use you. Thank you for the unity of faith. Thank you for the love of Christ that is flowing through everyone. We give you, uh, I celebrate everyone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, um, we'll file, and I want us to file, we'll file table by table uh, to the uh, serving point there. Quickly, we can begin to go from, uh, uh, where? Okay, from table one, the, uh, the <laughs> please let's go. Let's lead. One, yeah, please. let's let's go. Let's fight there. Uh, it's bread breaking. So everybody, everybody must eat. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Please let's go. Then table two, table three. Then we can take the announcement. Please, uh, the, if you are still interested in attending any of our Bible school, the, the ushers are with the forms. Usher, please, can you just lift up the form wherever you are? Just pick up the form. Give us your details. Your name and your WhatsApp number. Ushers, where are the form? Please just signify by raising up your hand so that they can give you the form so that we can keep in touch with you. Thank you. For everyone from Songwater, the conference for February next year, a New Testament Ministers Network Conference, holds in Lagos every year, first Saturday in September. It holds in Lagos. By the grace of God, we are trusting God for 400 next year. So we need a facility that can host 400 ministers. We are not going to step it down. We are going to do it exactly the way we are doing it. So 400 ministers. So if, you, if, if by any chance you have a fa facility that can take up to 400 ministers, that's where we'll be using in Lagos. Okay, and for uh, Songo Ota, uh, that's third Saturday in February, 18th of February. Uh, we'll be having the New Testament Ministers Network, Ministers Conference in Songo Ota. Everyone is invited. Uh, 
is going to the team is excelling in ministry. Excelling in ministry. By the grace of God, the flyers will be out so that we can begin to prepare. Um, this ministry takes the good news of Jesus everywhere. Timmy David ministry is not a church. It's, um, it's a ministry. Amen. A church is also a ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> But our, uh, is, our, our own calling is apostolic and teaching ministry. Apostolic in the sense that we take the gospel everywhere. From one place to another, raising disciples for Christ. And we run a very, very, very powerful teaching ministry. That's why we're running Bible school, running teachings everywhere. So um, uh, we take the gospel to every corner of Nigeria uh, with the platform of Grace and Faith Conference. Grace and Faith Conference are the meetings we host, I mean that we hold with local church. So if there is any church that is willing to bring us to their location, you don't need to, bringing us to your location does not mean you will foot our bills, okay? So we just need a church that can collaborate with us in that location because we are not we are not present everywhere. Hallelujah. So, our Grace and Faith Conference at Ed in Ilori, Akure, Adoekiti, uh, Ibadan, uh, no, it has not Ed in Ibadan, Ishagam, uh, Potakot, Lokoja, you know, and we hope to take this gospel everywhere. Hallelujah. So, we, we by the grace of God, we are hoping to go to Abekuta to Ibadan and some other places. So if you want to collaborate with us, you are very free to do that. And our Bible school can be brought to your location. If by any reason we can get up to 10 people within a local church that registers for the Bible school, they will bring it to your location. So it's not a Bible school where, it's not theology we are studying, no, it's a short-term course. But that short-term course have the capacity of transforming anyone. So we'll bring the Bible school there. Uh, as, as long as we are sure to have about 10 people, you know, within that locality, we do publicity and believe to have more people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, let's do it fast. Let's do it quick. So that everybody can uh, eat and have uh, Damilola. As I did, I did go. He went to call him. I want you up. Sorry, please collect those forms. Ayo, please send me collect the forms. Whichever, if you have filled any form, please collect it and bring it back. Hallelujah. Before you today, and there is something that I've come to say. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Things you have done. 